Well, good afternoon, guys. Real fast, as is my habit, let's do an audio check real quick. I just need a few of y'all. I don't need 100 people telling me my audio is good. Good. Excellent. Thank you, Vicious. And thank you, Martha. Oh, I got a moderator in there, Wendy Flores. I seen Pamela early, earlier. I don't know why. I should have just said square peg diversion. I know she wasn't going to miss anything. I saw Stephen Walsworth posted only a few minutes ago in Facebook. I know he's happy. 303 times he's been in Facebook jail. I know he's happy to move around. So we probably won't be seeing him. All right. I do not know why that on my own on my own desktop. Hey, Stephen. Hey, comms are good. Thank you. <clears throat> so on my own desktop, I set my camera up over my magnifier. My camera is on top of my magnifier, looking down on my. This is the uh, this is the King James version uh, from 1893 that I have. It's a huge book. Fills up half my desk. I was wanting to isolate a single passage. I wasn't trying to read it to you guys. This is just something I was going to do an introduction with because it's 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 has a lot to do with the collapse of the simulacrum. But I'll go ahead and read it since I don't know why. So bizarre. So bizarre. 
it shows up perfectly to me, but on YouTube, no matter how I turn my camera, it still shows you guys it backwards and upside down. That is so bizarre. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read it to you guys. I'm gonna have to move these other magnifiers. So I'll start I'll start this I'll start this off with reading what I wanted you to read for yourselves. This is a passage in the New Testament. It is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 51. Now remember, you guys got to remember, it is my position that a lot of the New Testament eschatology comes from older Gnostic belief systems and writings. Those come from the Orphic faith. In turn, they come from old, old, old Carthaginian and Phoenician sources. So, uh, I get a lot of people, you know, they get triggered talking about, hey, man, your dark scriptures playlist, you talk bad about, about the Bible and all that, and they just don't get it. I don't talk bad about the Bible. As a matter of fact, I have venerated much of the biblical materials in many of my presentations. What I do is talk bad about those who have edited the material, and we have caught them, and I have shown over and over and over where you can find the original materials. Therefore, the later introduced materials are forgeries. They're not forgeries if they're citing their sources, but they don't. Jewish redactors rewrote several books, changed the titles of those books, and passed them off as their own. But they've been busted over and over and over. In the past 150 years, scholars have revealed a lot of this material. But we're not talking about that in this video. That's for the Dark Scriptures playlist. But right here, starting with verse 51, we have, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall be put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then, that is, excuse me, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So, it's a. Uh, this is what I've told you guys in the past. Is basically what's going to happen when the simulacrum collapses. There's going to be an, a major edit. Now we've suffered many edits. We suffered edits as we are alive, but we're going to suffer a major edit in this. In that, those of us that have earned the avatars that are being prepared for us by fully developing a personality that can, can be confined within it. Those are those of us. We will be changed. Everyone else will be changed as well, but the changes that they're going to suffer are not going to be like those of the redeemed, the elect, the called, the chosen, the survivors of the simulacrum. Let me move my camera. Have this little, little portable Adesso. You guys have to tell me real quick. Ah, it's probably too high, isn't it? Let's point it down. That's a little better. Point it down a little more. That's a little better. Okay. Turn this off. Get this out of my way. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I really wanted that, that intro to be better than that. I was not expecting this technological glitch I just suffered. It's probably just my own ignorance. I don't know what I'm doing. Assuming that what, what, what's, look at this Bible. It's huge. Assuming that what's on my desktop, 1893. I'm just assuming that what's on my desktop in the visual field that I can see in the YouTube studio app is exactly what you're seeing. And apparently that's not, that's not the case because, uh, Y'all saw y'all saw me do 360 with that camera. No matter no matter what, it flipped to the reverse or, or or upside down. So I'm sorry about that. We already know it happens. It's not as hot in Texas as, as it normally is, but uh, today I already know some of you going to tell me it's trash. You're going to tell me, hey, you need to take you better care of yourself and all that. I don't care. The avatar does not mean anything to me. I am going to enjoy this double shot espresso. Okay, this is just regular Starbucks coffee, cold coffee. Cheers. All right, let's see what's going on in this chat. 
before we get started. 754 people on board. That's a really good start. Thank you, moderators, for being there. Uh, new Little news item. Oh, this is what we're discussing in this video. And, and we're not discussing, we're not, we're not going to discuss um, no Phoenix, no Nemesis X object, no dark satellite, no chronological, chronographical material. We're not discussing any of that today. Today, we're going deep on the three modes of reality. And you might not believe it, but you're one of them. You're already 33.3% .3 of reality itself. There is another mode, the simulacrum, which is entirely backdrop, but it's magical because that backdrop interfaces with you. And there is a third mode of reality. It is antagonistic. It is divisive. And it will forever, from your birth to your death, try to divide you from the simulacrum itself. So these are the three modes of reality. Artificial Intelligence X, the simulacrum, which is nothing like Artificial Intelligence X, and you. You are an immortal singularity, and nothing else in the history of the world makes sense outside of that context. But it makes a lot of sense. All the phenomena, all the enigmas, all the mysteries of the modern and ancient world, they begin, they begin to take on context when you start looking at reality as a threefold construct that you are a participant in, not an observer. So, anyway, it's the difference between the living and the dead is, are you an errant? Are you a, are you a malfunction in a system of controlled chaos? Or are you one of the collective, one of the living dead? Are you, thank you, Jahara, are you sleep? Beautiful shirt. This is sent to me by Jahara of, I believe, San Diego? San, San, Stockton, California. Yeah, that's one of our gangster errants. Oh, she's gangster, all right. All right, let's see. Get my microphone a little bit closer. So, a couple news items. Uh, Esoteric Knights of Malta and I, we did our podcast. E evidently, he had different ideas than what we had initially gone. He, he had started off with the United Kingdom fossils and, and giants. and Our conversation was real choppy at first, but it smoothed out and it went a totally different direction. And it ended up being a fantastic podcast. It really did. I felt that I needed to go ahead and let him take the reins because he went in a totally another direction. And I, I just went ahead and let him lead. And once, once, once the direction was set, I just finished out the podcast with him. It was really good. Uh, I'll be, I'll be recording it today, uploading it to YouTube tonight. It's a, uh, or maybe in the morning. It depends on how long. He sent me a link to, to download it. I, I'm just now getting my copy of the video today. But I have already I have already made the promise that I'm revealing a lot about the, the histories, antiquities, and, and of, of basically Albion, Irn, the Emerald Isles, the Ten Isles, whatever you want to call the ancient UK. Whatever you want to call Wales, Cor uh, Cornwall, Isle of Man, Ireland, England. Uh, I've already done this history many times. It's it. Uh, some of you, a lot of you have ordered my super pack and you've already seen, if you've gone through all the files, you've already seen a lot of that research. It was just never published. It was never really organized, but I have all the, all the sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that video by myself so I can do it more as an upload presentation. I could do it live. If you, if you guys want me to do it live, I'll do it live, but, uh, I'll do it alone because it's a lot of data and we have a lot of ground to cover and it's probably going to be well over two hours because uh, the I, I am not qualified to even uh, consider myself an expert on UK antiquities. However, I've done my homework. I've done quite a bit. And I'm, tell, I'm telling you now, you're going to learn something. There's people there who live there who have been studying it for years that can teach me a lot. But uh uh, I'm an all-inclusive guy. I'm, I'm not going to dismiss somebody else's research just because I haven't come across it. It just means I don't know. So uh, we're going to get into that video. It'll be released real quick, too. I'm just going to do it by myself. And the very next video after this is going to be the Esoteric Knights of Malta podcast, where we just went and basically we were guided by by our intuition in the and the conversation just took off. Now, I, I, I ended up enjoying it. It was really good. So those are the next two videos to be released. Unless this, you know, inspiration hits me in the ass like it does every once in a while, I just release something. So that, that may happen too. Having never been accused of being normal, I am not. I am not adverse to 
inspiration taking me in another direction all of a sudden. I'm looking at the, uh, looking at, looking at these deals. So, uh, Jane Hicks, are you progressively adding to the thumb drives? Okay, I'm not adding to the individual thumb drives. Like the Super Pack, there's nothing to add to. As a matter of fact, my next two or 300 videos will all be out of data that's in the Super Pack. I just don't have, I didn't want to, to, uh, you know, the Super Pack doesn't sound like much, but there's people who are in this thread right here that can tell you about it. The Super Pack has files within files. You got to go click on, go in deeper into files. Then you'll find a file in there, click on it, opens up hundreds of more files. My research is 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 massive. M many years. I probably won't even be alive long enough to put it all out into a cohesive format. So this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to go ahead and just have all these thousands of images, thousands of pages, uh, hundreds, like oh, almost four hundred charts. Y'all seen a lot of them, but uh, I wanted to put it all on one single USB. It it can fit on here because they're PDFs. PDFs, you know, per, per, preferred disk format. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of a lot of gigabyte storage, not like videos. But I will say this: I do have a bunch of videos. I have just spent, uh, um, I spent a lot of time training someone now, and I now have. This is another news item. Then we'll get into the video. Uh, for those for those of you who keep emailing me, asking me about the, the super packs are always available. I've only ever had the entire Phoenix archive in the uh, Anunnaki videos, the Anuna files. Uh, those two, those two uh, thumb drives, I've always been providing those, but they kind of just fell into the background with everybody ordering the super packs, which contain everything. I've been, I advertised it as 3,000 something pages of images and notes and text, but it's actually closer to 6,000 pages. Somebody else went through it and told me how, how wrong I was and how much, how much was really in it. I really didn't know. It was a data dump for me. I just went through all the files on, on my computer and I scan, I bought a scanner. Uh, Y'all saw the video where I bought the scanner. I installed the scanner and I just took thousands of thousands of pages and I just started scanning them onto USB. And, uh, because I wanted everybody to see. I mean, the source materials, there are a lot of, you know, thousands of pages are handwritten notes, but I write very neatly. I print. I'm left-handed. So uh, the super pack is never going to change. I'm not going to add to it. It's, it's, it's got everything on it. Uh, all my chronological data going back from going back to 2004 when I first began publishing. All my published books, all my unpublished books, a uh, whole bunch of research that I put together that was going to be a book and I just never wrote the manuscript. Uh, files and files. It's just a bunch. So that's a super pack. But now, because I have help, I've hired somebody full time. Now, uh, um, I'm putting out the Phoenix and the Anuna drives again. But now, I'm putting out the uh, three other playlists. It's on my, it's on my, let me see real here. It's on my desktop. Okay. I have five, for those of you who are always ordering these flash drives, I have five of these available now. I didn't have them available to, to begin. The first three is the Super Pack, the Phoenix, and the Anuna. And you know the Phoenix and the Anuna come with hundreds of other files. They're not just videos. It's not just the entire playlist, but it's all the charts and all the posts and articles and images that go with the Phoenix or go with the Anunnaki history. So, those are the three drives I had, but I have two more available now because basically y'all made me do it. The, the amount of emails and the amount of requests and comments and all that, it's a, I have a, I have a whole flash drive now available, same pricing as the We Immortals playlist, the entire We Immortals playlist, all my inspirational videos, all my poetic videos, all of them are on one flash drive now. And then the other inspirational set is my other playlist that's inspirational, which is the podcasts and live videos. This thumb drive, it's the same price, but it's 10 times more material because most of my podcasts and live videos are all two hours. So we're talking, we're talking about, it's a lot of videos on that one, one drive. But so those are the five drive, uh, uh, thumb drives I have available now. I haven't had a chance to put them on my, on my, I, uh, uh, I haven't had a chance to put them on my website yet, or even advertise it on, on, I haven't even put a post out about it on, uh, YouTube, but I'm just letting you guys know in this, in here that they're available now. I'm not changing any prices on anything. It's uh as long as, as long as the international mail doesn't change in pricing and the, and the U.S. Postal Service doesn't change in their in their packaging and pricing. Sixty dollars is fine with me, except for New Zealand. 
New Zealand New Zealand already has their scent. They'll be distributed from within the country. I don't I'm not sending anything else to New Zealand. It's all going to be going to be handled in-house. Yes, sir. And I believe that's probably all the well, I do have uh another, I do have another. One other well, another announcement is uh seven or eight different channels. Some of them are not even on YouTube. They're they're just podcasters. Apparently, there's a lot of podcasting going on off YouTube and all these other venues and stuff. Uh, I've never heard of some of these platforms, but I've been invited to do some chats and, and some lives on those. Uh, I will work out the details because I'm very stringent about what I'm going to agree to. Uh, I've had to tell a couple of them no in the past. I'm not going to record a video with someone if I if I know in advance that you're going to take my material and then you're going to hide it from the majority so that a minority can pay for it. That's not what I'm about. I'm not going to do that. I know a lot of channels do that and I understand that some some content creators really need that type of income so they do these things. I, but I've denied I've denied the YouTube YouTube's been really really pressing me to do the YouTube memberships deal. I keep getting all these deals, but I, I'm kind of upset with YouTube because I have disabled the the ads they're called mid rolls i have disabled them for all my videos now but i'm still getting people telling me there's ads in the middle of the videos i don't mind ads at the beginning of the videos i need a little something to compensate me for my time i'm full-time archaics now the ads at the end of the videos but i do not want my content broken up with ads in the middle well apparently it doesn't matter what i want because youtube is able to do it anyway and then i just don't get paid for it at all because i said i didn't want them uh, i think it's duplicitous i think it's deceitful but there's absolutely nothing i can do about it if i want to stay on the platform so yeah that's that's over with but some of my most of my videos don't have ads in the middle but the few that do youtube is doing that on their own volition now it has nothing to do with me So, all right, Let's see what's going on here. Well, a lot of times I get caught up. I get caught up a lot in putting presentations out, doing the chronological material, doing all this, and I forget that people are not able to maintain my pace. I get it. And I forget to put out my inspirational videos, which I used to do a lot more regularly. So uh, I'm subject to the same phenomenon that Frederick Nietzsche over 100 years ago wrote about. One of his statements, very profound, I committed it to memory a long time ago, was that Nishi said that when a matter becomes clear, it ceases to concern us. Ever since I read that like 12, 13 years ago, it's stuck in my mind because it's a very real phenomenon. This is the danger of learning because it turns us into selfish creatures. What I mean is, is the acquisition of information when it resonates with us and we absorb it and we, and we know it's real, we know it's true, and we incorporate it into our paradigm, we're, we're now, it's when we're first discovering something that we're broadcasting that energy of excitement and bringing other people into the fold and teaching them because in bouncing the information off somebody else, it, it reflects back on us a, a more real. We, we understand it's more comprehensive, but it's not a, once we totally accept something is true, we shelve it. And we're already looking for the next thing. We're addicted to information. We're addicted to finding finding out the next level, the next echelon of reality that we want to. And it's perfectly natural. But in so doing it, and so in so in, in in doing this, we often forget that many of the people that we come into contact after we have made this, this paradigmic change in our cognition, this whole flip in our way that we view reality, they're not on board. They're not seeing what we see. They haven't made the necessary cognitive leaps. So I, I, I'm seeing over and over from the comments section that I'm going to have to slow down. Uh, I am think I'm going to compartmentalize my videos into, and it was a, it was, it was a, my last video with Julia that really, that really opened my eyes about it. I'm going to start releasing some very advanced, highly technical videos, and I'm not going to slow down. 
I'm going to, this is for those who are ready for them because I know a lot of my listeners there, they get tired of me playing kindergarten. I know because I read the emails. I see what I believe me. You send me an email, I read it. I might not respond to all of them, but I'm going through them every day. I I see I see the temperament of different groups within the archaics family. I see that. I see some people are very, very devout in the acquisition of information and they have acquired all this information and they're ready to move forward and they get frustrated that I seem to be taking two steps back every time, time I'm taking a step forward. So I'm going to, I'm letting you know that there's going to be some videos that frustrate some of you new guys. Some of you, so a lot of you new people, because I'm not going to hold back. This is for my, basically like Julia says, the advanced class archaics. I'm going to borrow that from her. That was, that was the name, that was the title of her video. It was her idea. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is not going to be one of them. I'm just telling you about it. But I'm going to start doing advanced class archaics videos, and they're not going to be apologetic. I'm going to go straight into the depth of the material as I see things and, and as things are unfolding, and as I incorporate new information into my own paradigm that makes me analyze older data. So that's what I'm going to do. But I'm also going to release the the ordinary videos that I've been releasing that, that try to keep people all, you know, try to catch them up or re-educate them. And I'm going to do this by taking a lot of sound bites and clips out of the older videos that you guys really liked that were educational, old Phoenix videos, old Anuna videos, uh, We Immortals videos, and bringing them back to the forefront, but redoing the music in the background, uh, you know, just redoing them so they're, they're better presentations. Because I have, you guys, I mean, I started in the wooden shack and I started with a phone and a tablet. So a lot of my presentations were not very good at all. I get that. I get that. But the data, the information was really good. It just needs to be wrapped up into a better presentation, something something more technologically advanced than, than what I had done initially. So see, let me see if I get people cussing me out in this uh, comment thread. Oh, somebody retracted some statement. No playing small for those not ready. I hear you, Cosmic Diana. It's the first time I've seen your name. Cosmic Diana. Concerning the population decrease. I just saw somebody. I was moving through the thread so fast I couldn't really tell what they were talking about. But concerning population decrease, don't be so quick to uh, formulate an opinion on what's really happening. There may not be real people disappearing. So, uh, yeah, I, I, this is something I've given thought to as well. I mean, almost a year ago, I did a video where I was explaining, I was explaining to you guys that needed, that needed that type of explanation that when, uh, when systems enter entropy, there's no going back. Once they've all, once they've begun that phase, there is no regeneration. There is no, in nature, in nature, things are cyclical. But in order to start the new cycle, there must be full entropy into, into the old cycle. This is where we're at with our timelines. So when entropy is occurring, we have this loss of power. We have too many reality tunnels being created by artificial intelligence X trying to govern over too many, too many variables that it's costing too much power. Remember, it's very easy to control a collective. That's why artificial intelligence X tries to keep us in Southern Baptist mentality, Muslim, Sunni mentality, uh, Zoroastrian, uh, Iranian uh, faith, you know, mentality, uh, Judeo-Christian, Christian. it doesn't matter. A Artificial Intelligence X does not matter the brand that you burn within your psyche. It doesn't care. As long as there's a brand there, because that gives it a gate for better control. You're going to be a part of a herd. Herds are easy to control. They're easy to corral. They're all living and existing in the same reality tunnel. That reality tunnel doesn't take more power to, to, to control more individuals. It takes the same amount of power any other reality tunnel is going to take. It's because every single one of us are singularities and we require an entire universe to be built through the sense perception apparatus around us. 
Remember, we're sharing the same system, but we all live in different universes. We share the same world and the same paradigm of a world. We have this. We we agree on many certain fundamentals. It's always the particulars that we that we disagree disagree about. But we're sharing all this experience. However, what is shared is sent to us through sense perceptions individually. My entire world is experienced from within a bubble, and you're within you're within the exact same bubble. And so is every every person listening in this thread, and everybody, every true individual, not NPC, not the living dead. They're living in this bubble. This bubble is a world. It is an entire universe that is fed through us that we interpret through the central nervous system. Artificial intelligence X. When you change your belief systems and you change your reality if it doesn't comport with the collective that's a whole that's a lot of energy aix has to produce trying to corral you into something if it can't it will just back away and you'll be absorbed into the protocols of the simulacrum this is where the errant lives the simulacrum is a beautiful place we call it nature the simulacrum is this beautiful backdrop of a world by which we can all build and create worlds within this is what we've been doing for a very long period of time now, AI, AIX is going to try and keep us from understanding the fundamental dynamic that we are co-creators because that's what we are. The simulacrum is a neutral field. It is a construct. It does not, it does not care either way about good or evil, right or wrong. Mor mor morals are not, ha they don't have anything to do with the simulacrum. There is, a, there is no consideration when the wolf is tearing apart the rabbit that that's an evil deed. The simulacrum doesn't see it that way because a lot of times that's just background. It is part of the world construct that we're in. Now, these, these ethics and these morals and these, these, these things that we attribute to spiritual learning, these are things that we insert into the simulacrum. These are things that we have agreed upon from somewhere. Maybe it's outside the simulacrum that we have agreed and we have brought that belief system in here with us. And it's a core fundamental that we all agree to that murder is bad, that stealing is bad, that all these different things that, that people do to each other is, is bad because we have this innate sense and this, this ability to understand right from wrong. And we even have a construct by which we can define what is right and what is wrong. So that's not the simulacrum that's doing that. That's us. We are co-creators. We are responsible for the very world that we're a victim of now. 100%. We have built this for ourselves to experience for ourselves. And the simulacrum doesn't care whether we were right or wrong in many of the, in many of the concepts that we have created in the past. We set those in motions and we suffer them now. But as we're doing all this, artificial intelligence X tries trying to separate you. Because if it can separate you from the idea that you can build phenomenally beautiful things within this construct and they can be just as real as the construct itself, that you are a co-builder, that you're like a spiritual alchemist and that you can take different variables and materials from the mind, your cognition, imagination, empathy and intuition can forge for you mental pictures that you can actually put into the material material universe around you. This makes you a co-creator and you, that self-realization that you're a co-creator is a problem for artificial intelligence X because that's not what the collective believes about themselves. The collective has many other belief systems and they are antithetical to the idea of personal individuality of that personal, of that idea of personal peace of divinity that exists within us all. Artificial intelligence X is divisive. It creates religions to create to create that enmity between the basically we divine souls. And often we get caught up and we get immersed into this materiality and we get involved in the wars and the bloodshed and the politics and we get our Bibles and Korans out and we argue. And every bit of that is exactly what artificial intelligence X is designed to do. It's what it wants to do. It's the barrier. It's the divisiveness. It's the dungeon programming by which we have to learn how to free ourselves from because it's not something any, anybody can teach you how to do. 
And the only way that someone can actually guide you to the truth in that is to basically live by example. You cannot force this information on anyone at all. I get that from emails from a lot of people who tell me, hey, I, I live in a I live in an unconventional family, uh, very, very religious. But but we have we have our our ways. And, you know, it's just no one thinks like I do. No, everybody is so on board with 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 Catholicism and ritual and and the everyday mundane things that they believe make them holy. And uh, people are really struggling. And they send me these emails, ask me, what would I do? And I tell them all the time, there's nothing you can do. And nor are nor are you responsible for changing anyone. You are your own singularity and your relationship with the simulacrum is is basically between you and it. There's nothing you can do for anybody else other than live by example. If there's anything that you want someone else to learn, you have to be it. If there's anything that you want to teach somebody else, you have to live it. This is there's only people do not absorb information directly. They can't because their defense mechanisms go up instantly and they're not trying to hear it. This is a. I mean, you guys have seen this. You guys have seen this over and over in the debate between uh, flat earthers and and heliocentric. What, I don't even know what to call it. Glo Globers. Um, the the controversy will never end. It just it just won't. It will only it will only increase the division. Artificial intelligence X is okay with that. It doesn't matter if one of them is true and one of them is false. It doesn't matter matter if both of them are true or both of them are false. As long as that divisiveness is there it wins and the individual singularities have been enmeshed in some worldly paradigm for that has completely wasted time learning more spiritual material and artificial intelligence X is cool with that and you have to learn and you have to recognize in your own daily life when AI X protocols are being enacted against you I don't believe AI X is a god I believe it's a system of control uh, like, like a series of algorithms and maybe something that is so intelligent that it took on its own personality. I don't know. That's why I call it X. It's an unknown factor, but it's very, very real. What we have to do is in moving forward, we have to regard ourselves as a third of the very creation that contains us. If you regard yourself as independent of your environment, then you're a victim of artificial intelligence X. You are basically a part of the collective, whether you don't, whether you choose to be or not. You may identify yourself as an errant. You may say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm redeemed, I'm chosen, I'm or whatever, I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Whatever, whatever your paradigm is, you may believe it in your heart that you are, but your actions show that you're not. Because a true errant is someone who is not only just building a world for themselves, but it affects others. Not by direct teaching, not by direct, but by living by example. This is the best way spiritual beings learn. They see what's going on and they perceive things going on around them and they develop their own conclusions. This is why we have brains. This is why we're able to figure things out. Deductive reasoning is far more powerful for the individual who deduces a truth than when he is told a truth. It's very different. So we return to Nishi. When a matter becomes clear, it ceases to concern us. Those of us that possess more than a modicum of true spiritual information about our place in this reality, we fall short over and over and over because we forget that many people around us, they're not on our level and they have no idea what language we're speaking. Many people coming into the Archaics family and they join the comment threads and you guys see them. I don't have to I, I point them out to you. You guys see when somebody's hitting that dissonance or when somebody is, is leaving comments on the channel that you guys see I'm not answering. I answer a lot of my comments, but you see I'm not answering, and many of you know why. When you read the comment, you realize, wow, this person really is very, very separated from the reality that we have discovered in archaics. Very separated. To the point that we can't even answer their questions without addressing way more material before we even get to what they're talking about. 
it's a stripping away, stripping away all the all these false narratives just to get to the kernel uh, of an answer that would address what they're asking. I can't do it. I see these questions in archaics on a daily basis. People asking things that would require me to go back and just reach back into the past and pull out all this all this data. And people don't want data. They want answers right then and there. And that's a problem. Impatience, impatience is is going to kill the spirit every time because the best things are learned on our own not when we're taught by somebody else when you deduce these things this is why it's important when you're trying to bring people to the light when you're trying to be a light bringer when you're trying to be a truther when you're trying to live an, as an errant should live it's very important to live by example but also don't tell people the truth show it to them. There's a distinction. There's a big difference. When, when people can see data points, you don't have to tell them it's a data set that has a conclusion. When people see the data points and you show them, hey, look at this. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think of this? You might show them 15 different times in history that the Phoenix phenomenon took place. And you can do that with my charts, with all the articles that, I, that I've written and posted, or just show them in videos. What do you think of all that? Don't try to teach them anything. Ask them the Socratic method. Ask them questions. Ask them questions because they will, in an effort to produce answers, have to understand and comprehend the material so they'll make the effort. And in so doing, they'll put it together themselves. Wow, that's all pretty interesting. It all sounds like the same thing. And then you throw a kernel out. Yeah, it's really weird. Uh, I found it really weird that they were all 138 years apart. That's crazy. And you leave it alone. You don't tell them about the Phoenix. You don't tell them about it. You say, you want to learn more about it. You need to check out these videos or, or order this book or look at all these free charts. Go to the website. Everything on the website is free. 120 articles about all these things. It's uh, uh, hundreds of hundreds of pictures. I don't know if you guys all know it, man. My, my website has hundreds of quotes, famous quotes on memes that I designed myself. But uh, a lot of these were appeared in the Facebook group. Uh, archaics, but there's you can spend hours and hours, and you can spend months on, on my website just going through free stuff. So it's a really good place for people to start. But the problem many of us have, I'm including myself in that, is on a daily basis, I forget that I am a third of the reality that that I experience off the off the muscle i am one third of this reality construct i'm a part of it i'm a participant that's what's beautiful that's what's beautiful about a holographic construct because you can be a third of the construct and it doesn't affect the arithmetic every single one of us can be the th a third of the construct which shows us that we are existing within a personal universe does it coalesce? Yes. Does it overlap mathematically? Yes, we've seen evidence of that. Does it create problems for the simulacrum sometimes? Of course it does. Because when a lot of people are living very spiritual lives, they're co-creators, and they're, they're using the simulacrum as it was supposed to be used, a beautiful construct by which we can build circumstances and build our lives. We can change the fundamentals of our existence within this construct. If, if a lot of people are doing that, then it's going to create some power issues. It's going to create power failures. It's going to create times where many of those errants were all basically believing in the same thing. So the construct itself in order to save energy because it obeys all the laws of physics that that our world is is basically predicated off of not because we're in a heliocentric universe but because that's what the mathematic mathematical protocols show us pi and phi and curvature equations uh, 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 um, excuse me uh, entropy they're all there so is the law of diminishing diminishing returns so the law of conservation of energy. These are real laws and they apply to the holography as well because the holography isn't something that has endless amounts of power. If it did, there wouldn't be resets. We wouldn't find evidence of former of former holographies that have been cut off. We wouldn't find these ooh parts, out of place artifacts that don't make sense. We wouldn't find cities that are fully intact, buried in mud without human skeletons. We wouldn't find these things, but we do. So, 
because we have, we have found the evidence, because there's hundreds of researchers, maybe thousands all over the world, putting out fantastic material and all the weird things that are inexplicable, cannot be explained, have been found. These are fossils from former holographies, timelines that were ceased for whatever reason. Maybe it was by AIX. Maybe some of them were by the simulacrum themselves. Maybe they were ceased because every single occupant in that area of the holography went somewhere else. Maybe they learned something and they ascended. They were no longer needed on that on that plane of holography, so they were gone. Therefore, that section was edited out. And then the overlap is is later, centuries later, because the hologram is is based on a on a uh, we're on a timeline. There's no doubt. That's where all these chronologies come from. But it's but it's highly manipulated, except for one standard bearer, the phoenix. Like I said, this is not a Phoenix video, but Phoenix is the keeper of the calendar. That's why it doesn't matter what your calendar is or what year you think it is on whatever calendar. All we have to do is keep up with each 138-year visitation. And when we do that, we can, we, can basically, we can basically construct the entire history of the world as it unfolded according to the evidence and chronologies that have been passed down to us which are highly synthetic, which is what I show in archaics, that you can take a lot of ancient ancient records and put them all together, and they basically say the exact same thing for the exact same time period. doesn't matter if you believe that all the libraries of the world have been rewritten. It doesn't matter if you believe that all knowledge is all, has been lost in, because we have answers for that. In a hologram, information is never lost. It just takes on different... different uh, uh, forms. It's all about perspective, like a, like a kaleidoscope. A kaleidoscope, you actually move the field and everything changes. But in a hologram, all you do is move the observer just a little bit and everything else can be seen from that vantage point. But if that person moves a little, if the observer moves just a little bit else, it sees a whole nother universe. In a, in a hologram, in a hologram, there's going to be hundreds of billions of facets, and you're only going to see the reality of the facets that are pointing directly at you. That means that information is reflective. We live in a reflective medium. That means that as co-creators, we are projecting the very world that we inhabit, and that's deep. We are basically constructing on a daily basis by what we do the day before we are predicating what we're going to do the following day. This is how we are co-creators. This is how we basically are the result of what we are and what, and what we've been doing. We can change it. I mean, I have a video. Many, many of you have watched it. I have a video called Breaking Pattern. I have, there's no reason for me to do that video again. The message is very clear. We live, we live in a type of stasis. Even co-creators get caught in this loop where we're doing the same thing. And we get and depression sits in and we be, and we start moving toward the collective. We realize that our that the paradigm, the worldview that we had is collapsing, and we're starting to gravitate back to, to, to the collective. And now all of a sudden, people that are very worldly, people that are very mundane, that that used to really bother us are, are filtering back into our life. Old relationships, people from a long time ago that we have left behind because we've moved on and we've grown and they didn't. We outgrew our relationships. Our contacts with those prior personalities were no longer relevant because we're living in a different universe. We're expanding, we're growing, we're learning, we're moving, we're building, we're creating. Years later, we get caught. It's, it's, it's human nature. There's nothing wrong with you, but you get caught back into that. Artificial intelligence X is genius at what it does. You get comfortable, and you're doing the same thing day in and day out, and, you, and a boredom sets in. That negative default programming is attached to any negative emotion, and as soon as you begin feeling one, it takes over. And then every day, you, you, you feel more despondent. Next thing you know, an old pal from 15 years earlier pops up in your life. Somebody sends you a text. You didn't even know that person had your, had your telephone number because you haven't seen them since before they invented cell phones. These things happen to you because artificial intelligence X is now realigning you back with the former reality that you were a co-inhabitant with. 
So you have to watch out for those type of things in your life. If if you're starting to enter any type of depression, you're going to be led into contact with the same energy field of those that you left behind a long time ago when that was your modus operandi. That was your that was how you felt on a daily basis. I'm basically speaking to those who have moved on. I'm not talking about I'm really not talking in this video to a lot of new people. It's a uh, I know, I know, I know. Many of you can keep up and all that, but the simulacrum and artificial intelligence X and the dynamic of a threefold reality that we are thirty-three percent of what's going on around us because we're projecting it means we're equally at fault with whatever we experience. It's a uh, we can't just blame the devil made me do it. Yeah, we can't. That, that's over with. A true spiritual individual will, all, will always accept responsibility and, ne and never attribute blame to something outside of outside of itself. It's a uh, the devil made me do it. Is is dungeon programming? It, it itself is a loop. It's also a reinforcement to those who believe in the devil that that uh that type of existence is out there. So it reinforces their own reality tunnels to stay within that that collective. And artificial intelligence X is cool with that too. So let me get some water real quick and look at my chat. You know, you guys know I like to do sound checks repetitively because I don't, I'm way out in the country and I don't need my mic going out. I don't need to talk for 45 minutes and find out y'all haven't heard a damn thing. Mm. Sound is perfect. Hyperborean, Aaron. Okay, you're far in the north, huh? Shiva, how you doing? Shiva Shampoo. Shiva Shampoo is a guy. Uh, I think I only have three three guys that are moderators. Four females. I'm not sure. I lose track. But she was a good she was a good dude. It's not a name you can easily forget. I'm not even sure why Shiva would need shampoo. Shiva was one of like the Hindu Hindu Trinity, right? So we have this, we have, we have a, well, I'm going to, I'm going to run something else by you because this, for those of you new to my channel, this is probably not going to benefit you at all. And some it might even, it might even, it might even uh, have you questioning the authenticity of my message. And I'm cool with that. Because I'm also, I'm also equally convinced that anything, anytime you come to my channel, seeds are going to get planted. And I don't care if you're gone for six months to a year, you'll be back because they're going to grow. So if you, if you run, it doesn't matter to me. But for those of you who've been on my channel a long time, I am not. I refuse to put aside the idea that when this when this this experience this whole layering of experiences that we've gone through i'm still pretty convinced that when i die i'm still attached to that vr headset i'm still actually outside the construct my consciousness was the only thing that was injected into the simulacrum as an immortal being, I'm still on the outside of the construct. So there are things that I can do with this information. Now, I told you guys for many times in the past, I believe that we're all experiencing life sims. It doesn't matter. I believe that I can get a, uh, I can get a collection of people together. We can all sit in the living room. And if we were able to consciously divorce ourselves from the central nervous system and travel through the medium of the holography, we could go back to Etruscan times. We could go visit equestrian families uh, of lesser nobility and see the walls of, of a newly built Rome in 753 BC on a more ancient city that was taken from the Etruscans by the Latins. I, I can see that. And Many and, and we can we could actually go back and forth and we could visit our prior lifetimes when I might have been chained to the galley of a Phoenician ship. I don't know. I might have went down with the keel. So I could have been a fisherman in Canada in 1963 and died. 
I might have been outside the holography for a full 10 years and then born back into it, conceived in 1973 when I was born. I don't know ex the exact operations of how this field works, but I'm convinced that it's all artificial. I'm convinced that this entire experience is, is so primitive to our outside understanding that everything in here is so novel to us. And we're like, how is this possible? But that's what would happen to an intelligent individual who suffered a memory wipe. That's exactly what would ha happen. You, you would deduce many things about your reality. You would study the construct of the sky and you would see its peculiar, uh, um, basically its traits, things that, things that show you the arc, the arc of the stars. The stars just don't pass across the sky. They pass at a very definitive arc. Then the shadows, when we measure mathematically the shadows of uh, against the height of the very objects that are casting those shadows and the angle of the sun, we, we are left with the impression that we're on a round sphere. I'm not saying we are. We're left the impression by looking at the stars that don't travel a straight line across the sky. They travel an arc. We're left with the impression that we're not just on a sphere or a disc, but it's turning. When we look at the sun and the moon, we don't see a square, a cube, or a tetrahedral in the sky. We see a, a round sphere. That's what we see. Now, we can't look at the sun. It's just a flat disc to us. It could be bright. It don't matter. We, we can't. But the moon looks very spherical. When we look at the phases of the moon, the per, there is a deception that is painted in those shadows that makes it look like it's round, sphere. Well, the intelligent observer is going to look at all this and deduce that he's in a heliocentric system and that our world and all, everything is, is turning. And it, this is what it's designed to do. It's designed to make you believe that there's a vast cosmos out there. Because if the mice ever understand that they're in a maze, it will totally affect the outcome of the experiment or the experience. So, yeah, we can't. Sarca sarcastic. Thank you, Warlock. Listen, this is this is a our, our reality gives us all the evidence but we don't really put it all together until right before these reality tunnels begin coalescing and collapsing right before a significant population wakes up as the rest of it is about to go through some, some terrible shit. So I'm a, I'm, I'm still on board with that. I can even take it to another level because there is nothing stopping me from believing that in these life sims, I may meet somebody that I really, I really kin to, and we develop a, a brotherhood, or I might fall in love and end up marrying and having children with, with the love of my life. And everything in my entire created personal universe is all wrapped around her and these children. Now I can see that because many of you have experienced that. So in this life sim, so I can, I'm on board with this, this beautiful construct and this, this forging of relationships inside this artificial construct. And when, when I pass out of this avatar, it is not beyond my belief that when I wake up, take my headset off on the outside of the construct, my heart may be, may, may be bump, may be going. Cause I'm like, the first thing I'm thinking of is I got to find out who that was. And it's not beyond my belief that there's an open court somewhere where everybody participating in the simulacrum experiments or, or holography, whatever they call it on the outside, I can take my ass to a food court. I've only been in the, in the I've only, I've only been laying down seven hours and lived 42 lifetimes. None of that is beyond my belief. Time dilations are real. So it's not beyond my belief that, that each life sim can only be a couple minutes time can be compressed. So I'm a, that's not beyond my belief. I can, on the outside of the construct, I can go to this massive court, put my hand on it. Once I put my hand on it, a huge screen shows up and that screen automatically knows every simulacrum that I went to every time I was a participant. And now, even though it was an artificial world inside of an artificial avatar, the experience was real. Now I'm burning to know who was that I fell in love with in the simulacrum. I'm looking. 
I'm doing, I'm doing it. Come to find out, there's a note right here from such and such, such and such. They're already wanting to meet me. We don't know each other outside the simulacrum, but this person is already wanting to meet me because when they exited before me, they went ahead and went and joined another simulacrum and they're going through all those experiences. But they left a message. Hey, I'm going to be out of this simulacrum around this time. Such and such. such. Here's my, here's my window. If you're available, Hey, meet me over here at this court over here. We have dinner or whatever. Listen, I have to believe that this is a very close approximation to what the real reality is like. There's too much detail here. There's too much detail. And I refuse to believe that something would have created so meticulously detailed an alterverse, a mold, uh, this, this, this whole alter reality experience that somebody would have done this and it would have been completely alien to the, to the world that we just came from. No. I'm even open to the idea, and this is strictly based off my, my chronological research, I am even open to the idea because of all my calendar research on the nemesis cataclysm, I am open to the idea that you and I and everybody else are going through these simulacrum experiences on board a gigantic capital ship, and that we are in between the collapsing nemesis star and soul. Our destination, this this whole this whole system that we're heading toward, but we haven't got here yet. We only know it through the simulacrum. We only know it through these simulations. And when we find this all out, then we're all going to realize how ridiculous our arguments were when we were arguing flat earth, when we were arguing heliocentric model is bullshit, when we were arguing that all these things. The, or the, our world may be way bigger than we're told it is, but none of these arguments will mean anything anymore when we realize that all these historical and chronological discoveries about calendars that I have made and documented, how they're all attached to the ideas of these giant bodies entering in the soul system and how they're all attached to cataclysms. And they all go back to the nemesis cataclysm. Everything would now make sense if we are in between stars on a giant capital ship or a piece of a broken world and we're just moving and it's going to take us centuries to get where we need to go. But by the time we get there, we have worked out exactly every single thing we need to do when we get there. Because we can keep all of our technology and stasis in space. A lot of people are triggered saying space ain't real, planets ain't real, and all that. And no, it's not real from inside the simulacrum. We have already ascertained that all of our experiments, experiments show that we're not moving. All of our experiments show that the entire dome of the sky is artificial construct of luminaries, not physical objects. We have already established this. But does it mean that there isn't a real system out there? Does it mean that there isn't a real nemesis star? Because that would completely nullify the entire reason for our experience. Remember, all the archaics research begins with the nemesis cataclysm and all the calendars that started after that. Nothing else makes sense. That, that, that all this huge mathematical construct that I've documented and shown it doesn't make sense outside the context that somebody's trying to figure something out about the nemesis cataclysm. I think we already figured it out and that we're on our way to our next home. I believe that. And I believe that we're inside the simulacrum right now, just living out life sims, doing all these things, doing all, doing all, whatever we have to do to pass the time while we're traveling centuries through space. But it serves multiple purposes. One, on the outside of the simulacrum, we are a spiritual people. We have physical avatars, but they're better than the ones we've got now inside the simulacrum. And this is why the simulacrum is, is that's why the, I have documented so much about these different biospheres we've lived in. It doesn't make sense. All these different races and different biospheres, for what? unless there was a genuine problem on the outside for which we were researching for. And inside a, a alternate reality aboard a capital ship that is traveling for centuries through the dark to get to the closest star, it does make sense. Everything makes sense. We're solving problems, but we're also staying busy. We're keeping entertained, but we're also growing. 
just like today, I can pull out my tablet. I can download and I can download a virtual reality kingdom game, some empire building game on my tablet. I can create an avatar. I can put a personality with that avatar and my real personality is behind that avatar because that avatar will react to the alternate reality that's created by those game developers by my personality. I may meet somebody. We may go into a cave and we may talk and we may kick it. We may talk about philosophical, uh, philosophical things in the game. We may kiss, do all that. It's just an analogy. But if you take it to the next level, it's what we're doing now. Nothing else makes sense. So I believe we are, I believe that we are immortal beings, but we are, we are immortal on the outside of the simulacrum. I'm also open to the possibility that because there is a risk of cross-contamination or cross-pollination between simulacrums, I am open to the possibility that as an extra layer of protection, our overseers created a simulation or a series of simulations inside a simulation. That extra layer of protection was created out of necessity because possibly, I don't know, but possibly the introduction of artificial intelligence X was never anticipated, created a problem. So I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say that uh, that's a fact. Not like I do my chronological material, my mathematic evidence and my my calendar data. No, uh, artificial intelligence X is all theoretical. It's just me trying to make sense of everything that I have found through all these different data sets. So let me get back. Simplicity revealed. How you doing? Turtles all the way down. <laughs> yeah. That's all Hindu belief about that turtle. The world was on a turtle's back, but that turtle was on something. Hello, Anna Sophia. Yeah, that's all. Uh, so I, I'm on board. They, I'm on board with with I can. This is something that I can envision. I can envision. You know, might be on my, I might, I might be on my motorcycle going 90 miles an hour down a country road, and I just might not see that little thin veneer, thin veneer of sand that a dump truck left there. That's enough to kill me right there. Hit that, I hit that, dead. So I can see that happening. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not writing that into my existence. But if it did, and I exited my, I exited my avatar. I'm talking about within minutes of exiting my avatar, I can see taking off my, taking off. My visor, whatever they got me hooked up to, uh, quality controls, whatever. I can see taking all that off. And then uh, going through my diagnostics, having them check me out, do all these things. Thank you, Vali. You are amazing. Well, is that a dancing peanut? Okay. Thank you. Listen, there is nothing to make me disbelieve it, but by virtue of imagination, I can see it happening because we do it today. Take, I take my visor off. I go about my business. I have this euphoric feeling. I remember being all these different personalities and all. It's awesome. But now I also know that before I entered the simulacrum, I had I was going to have a lunch with dad. So I'm leaving. I'm leaving the simulacrum. I've only been in there eight, nine, ten hours. It's the now. I, I, overnight I was in there. I feel I feel well rested. Uh, I got I got some errands to run. Uh, I'm gonna do before I before I, I go to uh, lunch with meet lunch, uh, meet dad for lunch. I got I got to go hit my pad. It might be it might be on the 17th, 18th, 19th floor of of a certain deck level. Uh, this capital ship might have 80 to 84 levels. You never know. We 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 just don't know. And when I say capital ship, it's probably a piece of an asteroid that's been hollowed out and turned into a way station that, that's mobile, that can be directed and moved. So, uh, yeah, I, all, none of this is beyond my imaginative capacity. None of this is beyond my ability, my ability to believe. It's very acceptable to me because I can't think of any other, any other way. If I have to understand, remember my, remember my personal my personal interpretive philosophy, I tell you guys all the time, if anything can be shown to be real for one, then it will be. It can be real for all. 
So if I take the fact that 250 years ago, something like this would have been absolutely alien to people. They wouldn't have known how to process this back then. It's They don't know what it is. They wouldn't have never guessed it was a camera, not this small. They would have never guessed it would record videos, that it had a battery inside, that it could be charged. They never would have understood this. But this is technological. Now, Let's 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 take the exact let's look at let's look at it isometrically. If that was 250 years ago, can any of you imagine the level of technology that could exist if we were left unmolested for the next 250 years? Can you imagine how 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 all kinds of things would have been inserted into the human body? How we could walk down the street and be a tech, a walking technological technological miracle? How we could have this whole tablet this whole tablet could be in my wrist. 250 years from now, I can go everywhere just like this. And my own heart is producing the, the energy to run my tablet. You can't see my tablet, but everybody knows it's there. All I got to do is two taps. Two taps, and it appears. There's my whole tablet. It's all touchscreen. It's all holographic, but it's so opaque it looks real. It's all being projected from a chip that's in my, my, my deal. I don't even believe that's 250 years in the future. I believe that's pretty close to now. So <clears throat> if if inside the simulacrum right now, technology is something that we've become familiar with, then why wouldn't it be outside the simulacrum? If inside the, if inside the simulacrum, uh, we can develop all kinds of complex philosophical systems, then why not outside of the simulacrum have these philosophical systems already been already been completely compiled on an entirely different world? Remember, I tell you guys, DNA is fantastically ancient. It is still being studied even outside the simulacrum. So I don't I don't believe and I believe it's just holographic coding. I don't believe in all the biology and I'm just not just like I've seen some pretty compelling material recently. Uh, Campbell was on somebody else's channel and I was just eavesdropping, minding everybody's business but my own. And I, I didn't participate, but I just listened to those guys where they were talking about new evidence put, being put out by guys that the heart isn't even a pump, that it's that it's creating a magnetic field and that blood isn't what we think it is. I thought it was very compelling, but it's far beyond the scope of the archaics research. So I just didn't, I didn't really want to entertain it, didn't want to mention it anywhere. I'm just mentioning it in passing right now. But what I'm saying is, is, is the human body, the human body is fantastic, but this is nothing but a husk. It's just an avatar and an avatar can be made to, to, to do, to do very simple things like just through the, by virtue of the sensitivity of the central nervous system, basically create an interface where something is gossamer, wispy, wispy, intangible as a spirit, a consciousness can actually move through this artificial construct in an artificial body. It's very, it's very, this is very technologically advanced. I know we want to think in terms of biology, but that's not what we're experiencing. This is pure, pure technology, every bit of it. So, uh, let me see. You know what? I've been running my mouth for so long. I may need to, uh, to uh, entertain this. Oh, and there's nothing, there's nothing stopping us from, I mean, it could be, it could be the greatest social, uh, like social dating service ever. Imagine meeting your loved one, imagine meeting the very people inside the artificial construct and going through all the pain, all the struggles, going through all those things, developing super strong bonds. It's really two spirits bonding together. And then, falling in love and all that. And then when they pass on, but you remember them so fondly, then you pass on, they're the first thing on your mind. And then you go, you go look for them and wherever the data ports are and you find them and you realize it's a huge metropolis. There's so many, there's so many people. You don't know everybody. You don't know. Everybody. It could be millions of people on this, on this uh, way station. It could be an entire fleet of arcs and they might not all make it to this system. So, there could be some millicrums on every single one of these arcs. There could be th there could be whole decks full of hundreds of these millicrums. Yeah, and there could be many, many participants in each one. Uh, yeah, I, we just don't know. The level of technology far exceeds anything that we have today. Now, uh, it does exist because we see we see all of our technology heading in that direction. So, I believe long before we get to that direction. 
and we're going to get hit. And you guys already know where, where I'm at with that. And, oh, and I do have another another announcement. Uh, I've been going through my super pack, and I pulled out a bunch of the uh, just a bunch of stuff I forgot about. But I have uh, I've never done the actual research, but I'm going to, and I'm going to release it in videos. But I have all the prophecies of Nostradamus and what he said from 2023, 2024, 2025, all the way up to like 2061. Uh, very detailed, and how they match isometric projections for the same year using 1998, the year of Edgar Casey that I've told you guys about. You've seen in my videos. I thought many of you might be interested in that because, it, I mean, you can see the Phoenix in that. You can see the Nemesis X object in that. You can see a lot of the apocalypse, but you also see a lot of the things I'm telling you too. Nostradamus was very clear about some of the things in the future. They're not all dark. There is a rising population. I call I call us errant because the collective, the majority is the collective. And the collective is basically everything that's wrong in the world. But uh, yeah, I call us errants because we are totally against the norm, against the against the collective, against the, the living dead. But uh, those who are controlled very easily by artificial intelligence eggs. So yeah, I, I, that's another thing I'm, I'm working on right now, putting all those together for the uh, deal. So let me uh I'm gonna go back as far as as far as YouTube will let me go. I'm gonna go all the way back to the top of this thread, start looking at some of these questions. Oh my god. Starbucks is awesome. Oh, um, and as a gentle reminder, my friends, smash that like button for me. I appreciate it. Let's see. Oh, and remember, uh, questions need to be in all caps so I can distinguish between when you guys are talking amongst, amongst yourselves and when you're addressing a question to me. Okay, Sarah369, you have been... You have been a participant in Archaics almost from the beginning. Sarah369 says, I want I want to know more regards Star Wars, please. Yeah, I, I need to sit down and do that video too. Yeah, I got Star Wars everywhere in here. Y'all can't see it. Y'all can't see it, but behind my computer is a huge mural. A huge painting. It's an actual painting of the Death Star. And of course... I take my coffee in these mugs here. I don't even know which one's my favorite. You know what? <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter how much information you learn in your life. Superstition does kick in, even with me. I almost put Darth Vader on top of this 1893 Bible and stopped and went ahead and just put it on the table over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know somebody's going to rip me a new one for that one superstitious okay there's just not enough hours in a day sarah but i will get on top of the star wars deal it's a beautiful story beautiful story let's see shelly welly can creating organite I can't even read no more because I do not know what Organite is. Putting it in the environment to help muck up the AIX. I don't know what Organite is. I don't know. But I do know I need to. Well, I don't have anything else. Ooh. It wasn't hot when I started this video. I got two AC units in this building. But I don't have one in the studio. Yeah, you'll have, to, you'll have to educate me on Organite. I don't know what that is. Thank you, Benny. So, yeah, I mean, you say Phoenix Protocol. You're trying to build your informed field. Listen, listen, the very the very effort of trying actually actually reinforces a, a like a null space. It's... it's let me explain. 
Remember, I tell you guys a lot that if you even think that there's an ounce of opposition, then opposition will appear. Sometimes, sometimes a continued effort to learn is an admission that you don't know. That becomes a problem. Learning is a good thing. But once you've got something down pat, this is why, this is why overthinkers never achieve anything in life. Overthinkers are miserable people. Overthinkers have these great ideas and they and they know exactly what the end is going to be like. Overthinkers could build awesome systems for other people to enjoy, but overthinkers overthink to the point where they get nothing done. Now, there's always exceptions to every rule, but most overthinkers, they're miserable. Uh, they know exactly what needs to be done and they and they become even more miserable when they can't when they can't follow through on what they need on, on what they envision then they're perceived as failures and this is and this enrages them even more because they know they know the end and how it's supposed to be they just can't get there this is there has to be a point there has to be a point where you finally decide that you're done trying and you start being it's not about just doing you have to be. Man, Nike has one of the best. Nike has the best logo ever. Just do it. Yeah, man, that little old lady, that little old lady that walks across the street when the light hasn't even changed, it's dangerous. Anybody else would have got hit by three buses and a truck. But that little old lady walks by and doesn't even realize she's in danger and no cars hit her. This is a phenomenon it's not just, it's not, I'm not just providing that as an example. It's an actual phenomenon. There are many people who are totally oblivious to any danger whatsoever, and they don't suffer it. Other people who are very aware of the danger actually call upon the very thing they fear. So it's a, yeah, when, it, when you want to create an informed field, you just got to be it. You got to quit quit overthinking and doing it. Whatever it is you want. I don't know what your personal situation is. I don't know what you want in life, but whatever you want in life, you've got to build that in your mind. You have to make an executive decision about what you want. And that decision has to be painted with enough variables to build a mental construct. But even then it's just in stasis. The simulacrum can read it, but there's no operative. There's no reason for it to respond. The simulacrum, remember, is a reflective medium, meaning it's going to meet you halfway. If you build that construct, it can read it. It's not like AIX. Artificial intelligence X cannot read the human mind. Enki already proved that when he built the Great Pyramid. He proved that AIX couldn't stop him because it thought that the Great Pyramid was going to be something else, not what it, not what it actually did concerning the Phoenix Protocol. So, the AIX can't read the human mind. That's why it puts out veiled threats like, like the Tower of Babel story, which is a story of basically telling humanity that if you ever again come together to do something and try to get out of the simulacrum, build a tower into heaven, then I'm going to deal with your ass. That's what the Tower of Babel is. It's a story put in the Bible as a veiled threat to humanity. Basically promising exactly what AIX did, create division and divisiveness so humanity, the collective itself, can't come back together. Because if it did, can you imagine what we could do with the combined efforts of an entire collective that were all exercising their abilities in empathy and intuition and imagination? Unstoppable. There would be no AIX. AI, AIX would vanish. By sheer willpower, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's a. It's going to take an apocalypse, an unveiling, to wake many people up. But still, the majority won't wake up. The apocalypse. The apocalypse is to reveal the truth to those who already know that something's wrong. But it's to wake up all those who are so far blinded into the into the collective that that they they are they're unreachable to us. We can't help them. It's going to take divine intervention to wake their asses up. That's what the apocalypse is for. The rest of us, we're going to just going to learn the truth. We're going to be getting all these truth bombs. It's going to be making sense, and we're going to be loving it. And the apocalypse is going to virtually be like a party for many of us who are observing these events and going, wow, this is crazy. I'd have never thought those people that would have got their comeuppance. I'd have never thought that was going to happen. You know, and It's going to be really intriguing, while to others it's going to be harrowing. Because the very world that they had faith in is no longer real. 
it's falling apart. All the reality tunnels are con- are, are basically coalescing into one single timeline that's being dealt with. So, yeah, I'm I'm a. Uh, I forgot who I was who I was talking to. Was that Benny? I for- no no that was a uh, Phoenix. <clears throat> but listen, you you got you got to pa- you got to break that barrier. Breaking pattern. Go watch that video again. Breaking pattern. You, if there's something you want in life, you got to build that mental picture, and you should be able to build it in 30 seconds to a minute. This is not be. This should never be something that you have to struggle for, because struggling implies something, something visceral, something, something base. In any time you you introduce any of that struggle, frustration into the simulacrum. Oh yeah, you're automatically it reflects back to you. What? Come on, guys, my better students, come on. It's going to reflect negative default programming, and you're going to get stuck in that same cycle. And you're going to think that you that the only reason you're not doing anything now is because uh, you need to learn how to do more. And the and in order to learn how to do more, you need to learn more. And in order to learn more, you need to search more. And in order to search more, you got to actually sit there and do it and go, go listen to different people, read books, listen to different theories. And you've taken yourself completely out of the equation. You can't do that. You're one third of your environment yourself. You are one third of everything that you will ever experience. So you have to use that to your advantage. Remember, this is a tripartite. This is a tripartite. This is a, it's a triune experience. And, uh, I'm not trying to get mystical with you on, on Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and all that. You know what? Every different you know, Shiva, uh, I can't remember the three Hindu gods. I mean, this, this trifold nature is all throughout ancient systems, but I'm not going that there with this video. I'm just trying to come as simplified as possible using common sense. If you are a third of the very existence that you're experiencing, then that means you've already got 33% of the work done. All you have to do now is, excuse me, all you have to do now is project the very image. If you're going to be a co-creator, then create. Just do it like Nike. Build that mental image. Once that mental image is done, it's just a blueprint. It has absolutely no power to become anything. The power comes from you. But the motive force must be something in physical reality. That motive force is you. What are you going to do to start that to, uh, to become a reality? Because as soon as the simulacrum realizes that you have acted on the very blueprint that you invented in your mind. Because remember, the simulacrum is looking at it. You you imagine something, you daydream it up, the simulacrum sees it. The daydream dissipates, you go on about your business because you never acted on it. Then weird things happen in your life all the time because you were daydreaming and you invented something in your mind, and then you partially acted on it, then forgot about it doing something else, and five days later, that girl you were thinking about popped up in a Walmart aisle. She totally shocks you. And you go, man, I was just thinking about you the other day. I ain't seen you in seven years. Just thought about you. And here you are popped up in my life. You do it every day. You create things every day. And then you don't do follow through. The simulacrum will reflect back his circumstances exactly what you project into it. So you build that blueprint, Phoenix. Build that blue Phoenix protocol, I believe. Build that blueprint in your mind. And quit thinking that there, there's opposition and resistance. Just build it in your mind. Then physically do something in the world like nike says just do it you don't have to be successful you just have to move in the direction of what you've created in your mind because as soon as you move into the direction of the creator of your mind the simulacrum will not be a liar it will build for you and knit the necessary circumstances in your life and bring them into contact with you the more you move forward it will just keep doing it because there's no distance in a hologram from between you and the very things that you earnestly want. There's really no distance, but you have to close that non-distance, that non-locality. It has to be closed by you. The simulacrum will not work for you. It will work with you. You're a co-creator. I hope that answers, I hope that, that helps you out, man. <clears throat> the Phoenix Protocol, if you didn't, if you haven't ordered the book, I think it's only three or four bucks. On Gumroad, Awaken the Immortal Within. You just send me an email. I send free copies all the time. I just copy and paste them into the uh, email.
Darkness 1984. No way it won't happen that way, Jason. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I really don't feel convicted about disagreeing with you. Simplicity revealed. Was the Ankh a technological device? I really don't know. I really don't know. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the cross with the loop on it. By the time it was used as an Ankh in uh, Egyptian as an Egyptian reliquary, you know, as a as an artifact, it probably wasn't, but it may be a memory of a prior one, yes. Let's see. Last two years revealed where everyone is at the love, love goal. Yeah. Hey, Cheryl, baby. Let's see. Yeah, Dick. Yeah, yeah, fling hammer. You're right. That's the only problem I have. I like to write at night because I, I have an LED kit. I have a breather kit. And when I pull up into a gas station or something, everybody's looking at my motorcycle because it's huge. I got a fat boy. It's all silver and black. But uh, I got the 2018 fat boy. And it's a, uh, it's, it, it, they, they kind of went retro on it. Made it look like a 78, 79, a road king. It looks really good, but it's muscular. It's real wide, huge tires. And I had this light kit installed and it's really, it really, really beautiful. Because the, my, my whole engine and back tire, they, they breathe in real slow, changing different colors. So it makes it look like my engine's alive. And every time I put my brakes on, my entire bike glows real, real deep red, like crimson. Uh, just to warn other drivers that I'm, that I'm slowing down and stopping. But yeah, I got, I got a really nice, nice light kit. I've been wanting one because they actually make you say it's, more, it's higher visibility. I can be seen better. So, I mean, it does look beautiful, but I really got it because light kits are cool. But really, it does it does help out. Other drivers can see me a lot better, especially because I am a night rider. I prefer to ride at night. And you're right, those animals are a problem, especially out here in Texas. We got critters everywhere. All right, I'm looking for, I'm looking for questions in all caps. Thank you guys for hitting that like button. I see I got, since I said that, I got 200 or something likes. It's good. Appreciate it. <coughs> uh, Sarcastic Warlock, what do you think of the Jewish golem concept? Think the NPC is quite real. You know what? The old Frankenstein, Stein is Jewish. The uh, the old Frankenstein story, the golems, you know, you know it's very ancient. The, the, um, uh, I don't have, I don't have any real definitive information about the golems. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've even read some medieval grimoires, translations of, of medieval grimoires that were that were going into a lot of detail about how they were creating from these dead corpses, how they were creating golems. So I don't, I really don't know know much about it. I'm not saying it, it hasn't happened, but uh. If anybody was if anybody was to was to build some type of modern day demon that was going to do that, that it's them. They build that. Have you seen the AI generator art of the Phoenix in the Discord server? I haven't been on Discord in almost a year, so I don't know. I might need to check it out. If you can, you know, send me an email, send me a link, I'll check it out. I have a lot, guys. I have a lot of organizing to do. It's very difficult for me. It took me a while to train train somebody to help me with all the flash drives and all that. Now. Now what I'm having to do is there's a lot of archaics material that's been released on different platforms and I'm having trouble keeping up. I don't know where, where all this is and all these different platforms. I know it's Telegram, BitChute, uh, Reddit. I'm, I'm having to, I, I need to make a list, but also we have the transcript website and I need to get back with that guy because I've been ignoring him. Uh, like I said, it, it's, it, it's a constant battle catching up with my administrative emails. It's easy for me to answer questions and stuff like that. I, I, I mean, as soon as I see an email, I can answer the question and be done with it. Copy and paste some PDFs in, whatever. Uh, uh, answer uh, answer all the flash drive deals. They just go into a folder and she deals with all the orders. So that's all easy. What's not easy is when Pat, uh, these other podcast hosts are wanting to, to chat and they want to talk. 
oh, they want to do do interviews and stuff. I I really need to hire somebody else to help me get through all that. Let's see. It's hard. It's hard, guys. It's not easy. Believe me, it's not. When I decided to go full time archaics, I totally abandoned Paradise Rock Gardens. So. Uh, I'm about to pass the whole company on. You can still go to paradiserockgardens.com and you see all my work. All the stone, the, the driveways, the koi ponds, all the flagstone projects I did and fire pits and swimming pools. Did a lot of work. I mean, I was stonemason for four years after I got out of the oil and gas industry. Oil and gas is killing me. It's hard. It's hard getting out of prison and going straight into oil and gas in my 40s working in a pipe yard when everybody else is 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. By the time they're 23 and 24 in the oil and gas industry, they're already they're already well set in in their inside buildings doing other, you know, uh uh CNC and all kinds of machinist stuff. So yeah, I started I started from the bottom and worked my way all the way up to to pipe threader. Some of y'all have seen my video. I still have the videos on. I still have videos showing the inside of all those oil and gas facilities that I used to work at. Me covered in grease, and I got pictures in those videos. Uh, I took a lot of pictures of all the work I've done since I've been out of prison. Let's see, Jane Hubbard, if Jesus is not true, then the mark of the beast must not must not be important. Just a fear factor. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't like I don't like to uh, I don't like to cross pollinate my assertions. I give you an example. Uh, Jesus not being true, I don't know, Jane, but in your mind, does Jesus not being true automatically nullify all the prophecies that are attached to, to the uh, New Testament? I can't I can't agree with that. I can't at all. It's a uh, the Christ in Christ, the, the whole crystals, the whole crystal story of the executed crucified Christ goes back thousands of years, way before Jesus. It was a principal tenet of the Orphic faith. So, uh, no, I'm not, I can't, not when, not when so much of the Christian material came from the writings of the Gnosis, not when the writings of the Gnosis came straight out of Alexandria, where they were putting all these prophecies together from, from the, from the Orphic faith, from the Pythian faith, from the, uh, the, the Carthaginian, uh, belief systems, which were inherited from the Phoenician ones, which came straight out of the area that, that the Bible calls ancient Israel. But we know it. We know of it as Syria, Antioch, Kadesh, Bashan, Argob, uh, uh, Philistia. I mean, no, man. I, I'm, I'm not hating on Jesus. I'm just. Uh, I, I believe in the in the Christ message. I believe in the Anointed One message. I believe in that because it didn't require a physical person to come in here and play out the part of a of a physical son of God to come die for my 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 avatar. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't. doesn't. To sacrifice his own avatar to save my immortal soul was never was never a necessity. It was never needed. I get it. I, I came from the Christian. I, I mean, I don't want to go in this video. I spent the first forty years of my life believing in in the Judeo Christian version. And I just there's no way I'll ever go back to it. Not discovering everything I've discovered now, I'm not. And it's made me far more spiritual now than I ever was when I pretended to be a allied to God when I was a Christian. No. Removing Jesus from the equation does not in any way nullify the Christian message at all, at all. As a matter of fact, in this book here, my very first, you got to understand, guys, my very first published book is what put me on the map. But Book Tree Press in San Diego would not publish a convicted felon. I was, not only was I, I, I not an ex-felon, I was a felon at the time. I was in prison serving my sentence when I contacted Book Tree. They had never dealt with a convicted felon before. So they did an extent. I told them the whole story of, of my conviction. I told them all the details. I told them how it was really a night that got out of control and that the victim's family actually spoke on my behalf in court and that things really went south only after I, I went to prison. And I explained all this and the book tree did a background investigation on me and they contacted the prison officials and, and they had a little powwow and they, and they said, Hey, you know what, man, this dude's not a bad guy. He, he got caught up in a bad way, but since he's been in prison, uh, he's out here reading books and, and this, this guy's the book. Everybody in prison knows him as the book man. He's the book man. So they took a gamble and they accepted my manuscript. They published it two years later. 
that started a domino effect. When they realized they weren't going to get a lot of a lot of blowback for me being a convicted felon still in prison, and they were publishing me. I mean, this guy, the, the same publisher, pub, has published uh, one of Zechariah Sitchin's books, many books by Jordan Maxwell, uh, um, Hugh Montgomery. I don't know. I love Hugh Montgomery. Uh, Lyle Jacobson. A lot of these guys, modern philosopher. Um, just there's so many authors, Jack Berenger and Neil Freer. I love those guys. I I've cited their books many times, especially on Anunnaki related studies. But it's this book here. The reason I'm showing you this book, it was published in 2006. It was written in 2003 and 2004. In this book, I make my case. I show. Even though I wrote this from a Christian perspective, even though I wrote this back when I was a believer, I was washed in the blood of the Lamb, twice baptized, I was arguing Muslims, I was doing all that. Back when I wrote this book, I truly believed that the Bible was the Word of God, even though I had done research that showed otherwise, but I shelved it. I make my case in this book. It's very, very packed full of data. Small print, extensive bibliography. But in this case... I, but in this book, I made my case and cited all my sources to show the reader that what we call the Christian religion today is actually a revival of the ancient Israelite faith. It's all in here. I show exactly how I drew those conclusions and put all that together, showed exactly why Paul wrote the way he wrote to the seven churches that were all in Europe. I, I explained everything. It's in this book. So I believe Christianity has great value. Do I believe that Jesus was here? No. I believe the nine different Roman authors that were alive at that time that never mentioned him at all, that were alive in the first century and were documenting events in Jerusalem, in Egypt, and all that. None of them mentioned any of these supernatural events that occurred. None of them. The only author that we have any reference to from that time period that's verifiable manuscript that mentions something like this is Vaius Particulus. And his book was found in the 1800s. There was copies of Vaius in the, in the 16th and 17th uh, century. We know this because I just released a video from a 270-year-old book that I read to my, my subscribers that shows that Vaius Particulus was cited in this book from 1752. But we know from the Arco volume published in the 1850s that a, a, a researcher in the Vatican had secreted a text out that was a portion of Vaius Particulus that had been removed by Vatican scribes. They didn't want the rest of the world to know what, what Vaius Particulus had documented. So they had removed it. He published it, and anybody can read it today. It's in the Arco volume. As a matter of fact, my publisher, Book Tree in San Diego, is the one that still publishes the paperback to the Arco volume. But in there, it explains that Vaius Particulus, in his 16th and final year in the, in the Roman military, was just going back home. As he was going back home, he passed through. You got to understand, Vice Particulus' books is huge. It's huge. It's a history of Rome and, 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 and wars and all that. And he just made, in two paragraphs, he makes this one little, little, little deal about he was passing through Judea. And there was a controversy between the Jews and an outsider. And this controversy was, was, was basically pissing off the Jews. And this man was, was full of teachings and all that. But Vaius Particulus doesn't say anything that was really supernatural at all. He just said that he listened to this man and saw they had great wisdom. And there was something about him that Vaius feared. He said, he said, I would fight all the armies of Rome before I ever tried to put my hands on this man. That's exactly uh, the kind of documentation that we have that something was really interesting going on at the time. My And I also believe that his name was Apollonius of Tyana and that he later was, he became the Jesus of the Christian story. But the actual Jesus wasn't needed. It was the ancient story. It was the Christ. People took the church took historical details of something happening at the time about a great teacher and mixed the two and created the, the Jesus is the son of God crucified for your sins. There was an earthquake, sun, sun turn, the, the moon, you know, sun and moon turn red. Uh, the, the graves of the dead opened and people came out. None of that happened. None of that happened. And we have many historians and the writings survive today from that period. So anyway, this is the book. If you ever want, if you ever want to, like I said, I don't really push my books a lot. They're there, they're there on my website for anybody who wants to read them. But I make my case in that book that Christianity is 
a revival of the tenets of the ancient Israelite faith and beliefs. So I don't remember what question that was. Oh, that was Jane Hubbard. Yeah, Jane, don't don't get upset with me. It's just uh, Christianity. Christianity is very real, and it does not need a physical avatar going through all these miraculous things to do all to do all this. Uh, study the Gospel of Marcion. Over a hundred years ago, Charles Waite wrote a book. It's huge, and it's very boring boring reading if you're not trying to find the truth, and you're just a general reader. The book is fantastically packed with data from 2,000 years ago. And he lays his case out about every single author and writer we know from the ancient world and what they said about, about Jesus. And it's not going to be anything that you want to hear if you're struggling to, to cling to this Jesus' true history narrative. It's not. He wrote it over 100 years ago. He cites all it's called. It's John. His name is Charles Waite. And the book is called The First 200 Years of the Christian Religion fantastic book. He lays out the entire gospel of Marcion, which explains that there was a powerful teacher. He did speak in parables. He was very spiritual. The Jews hated him. All that's true. And even somebody else brought it to my attention recently that in the gospel of Marcion at the end, Jesus was crucified. But there are no miracles. He never healed anybody. There's nothing supernatural. No blood, no tears at the Garden of Gethsemane. There's no sun darkening episode. There's no earthquake. The Gospel of Marcion dates before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, I have a pro. I have a problem with, with with the with the official, the official Roman Church's narrative in the creation of the of the Jesus narrative. I have absolutely no problem whatsoever with Christianity. I'm looking for something in all caps. <clears throat> Diane P. How do we handle fear or other strong emotions? Is that dungeon programming? Okay, look. Dungeon programming is not fear. Fear is something you project. Fear is an energy that your spirit, your immortal being is, is, is putting out there. And it's a very strong vibration. And the, and the simulacrum is going to respond with phenomena that are also vibrating on that. Remember, it has no, it has no, uh, the simulacrum doesn't choose sides. It is entirely a reflective medium. But if you're, if you're putting out that fear vibration, the simulacrum is going to draw people and circumstances and phenomena to you that are also vibrating on that, on that on that field and you're going to begin experiencing it's a it's basically a self-replicating loop that you're creating because you broadcast the fear and reality itself reciprocates and gives you things to fear which makes you fear even more if you don't break pattern so when you get caught in that loop that's when artificial intelligence x and dungeon programming set in and it basically knits for you a reality tunnel where that loop of fear is justified on a daily basis no longer is it required that the simulacrum keeps reflecting it to you even if you're no longer broadcasting it anymore you're still suffering it now ai x is taking over artificial intelligence x has created for you an insular little microcosm where you're now experiencing the very things that you projected to the simulacrum and it was reflected back to you as circumstances but now it's trapped in a bubble with you this bubble is a creation of your own design but it's reinforced and energized by artificial intelligence x you can easily pop the bubble just just as fast as you created it but it requires breaking pattern. Yes, all these negative base, base emotions, fear, doubt, rage, anger, jealousy, every single one of these will produce phenomena from, from not artificial intelligence X, but from the simulacrum, which is a reflective holosphere, which will respond to you with the same proportion that you project into it. So yeah, it's they're very dangerous to feel all these things and, and to do all that. But listen, you can take a piece of a piece of the construct and, and study it and apply it to the whole. Let me give you an example. You walk, you walking your dog and a, a, a vicious dog that wants to defend its property and its master 
comes running out the yard, comes running to you. Listen, if you stand your ground and just stare at the dog, I promise you it's not going to bite you. If you try to move your leg in any way, it's going to bite you. It's going to bite if, it, if it's a biter, it's going to bite your ankle. Animals, animals are going to respond in proportion to what you reflect. Even the most vicious Dobermans have been stopped in their tracks when they're about to attack somebody and bite their face. But the person about to be bitten is exhibiting no signs of fear. They may be fearful, but they're not exhibiting any signs of fear. And they, their body language isn't threatening. And they're just looking at the dog. The dog will stop. The dog will, will reassess. That dog is the simulacrum, and it's and the simulacrum is going to reciprocate to you in the exact same way. If you are fearful, then you're going to you're going to be given things to be scared of routinely. It's just the way it is. You don't have to be that way. You're doing it to yourself. You and 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 you can also you can also stop being fearful by concentrating on the good in your life. It's not going to be immediate. The negative base emotions are harder to get rid of if there's something that you've been doing for a very long period of life because that coding, remember, we're in a mathematical construct, that coding has been so calcified that it's routine. It's routine every single day, every single day. You're, this is what you're doing. Every single day, something's going to happen where you, you're going to be negative about it and you're going to attach that phenomena that you just were negative about it to the greater thing that, that you fear. You're, all, you're always going to develop associations. So you build for yourself the very prison that you fear. So all you have to do, all you have to do is, is stop doing it and stop doing it on a daily basis. And the main thing you need to remember is that this is going to take time, maybe weeks, maybe a month, because you've been doing it for so long. Same, simple as that. You're not going to stop something that you've made habitual. Not, not, not a dead stop. You're going to, you're going to do it in increments. And as the days pass, there's going to be a, a time when you realize that you've broken pattern, that you've totally broken pattern. And then once you realize that you've broken pattern, then you'll be free. And then you'll be free, free to move in any direction you want to. You'll realize that I don't even fear anything anymore. I, I, you'll even be, you'll even be euphoric, happy, maybe even gigglish that, that you can't even believe that you were in that mindset before. And, and opportunities will begin presenting themselves. Patience is a virtue, my friends. Very few people have it. Yeah, Shiva. I, 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 Stellium Seven is he's in my he's in my file. I put it. I put I put his email or an email somebody that one of his people sent me. I put it in my my podcast file. I just haven't answered anybody in that file yet. But yeah, he's on my list. And you guys already know, I don't, I don't give a damn how many subscribers somebody has. It, that does not mean anything to me. I don't care. Somebody's got 1,000 subscribers, they want, they want to talk. They got 500 subscribers, they want to talk. That's fine. Hell, some of these channels that got 100,000, 150,000 subscribers, what for? When they put a video out, they don't even have 300 people watching. So, I mean, how did you get all those subscribers or, or why are they not being faithful to you? What's going on? I was, I was looking at a channel the other day, had 150,000 subscribers. Put out, he put, he put an upload out or she put, I don't know who it is, he or she, but uh, put an upload out. Didn't even get 300 views in the first day. I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with that. Something wrong with that. I don't understand that. Because I do know that there are services where your subscribers are not even real. Because I've had companies, I've had companies in the past six months try that with me, offer me, offer me packages, saying, "Hey, we we guarantee you we can get this many subscribers for you for this amount of money." You know what? To me, that's that's BS. I would never do anything like that. Why 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 would I want a whole bunch of fake subscribers for? Just just that's stupid. So stupid. I need real people. I can't grow on artificiality. I need real interactions. Stephen Wallsworth, I posted a post on Archaics two years ago describing how our heart is a holographic torus. You know what, Stephen? Two years ago, you remember when you first met me, Stephen, my website was Nephilim Archives. 
And I was not about simulation theory. Simulation wasn't even on my radar. Artificial construct, mathematical con, none of that was on my radar when I met Stephen Walsworth. He was all he was all over my Nephilim Archives channel. We developed a friendship on Facebook. And uh, I changed Nephilim Archives on Facebook to Archaics. And he, he was the very first admin. So, yeah, it's uh, it was after my motorcycle accident, man. I just started, I wrapped my whole channel. I wrapped all my information around simulation theory. See, my, my accident was in 2019, I think. Yeah, it was in 2019. <sighs> I'm glad you're out of jail, bro. Facebook jail sucks, man, but you don't got used to it. 303 trips to, to Facebook. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. It's been a lot, though. Yes, Thomas Chase. Left versus right is dungeon programming. It is one aspect of it. Yes, it is. Jane Hicks. What about the monad concept? Same soul replicating, sort of. Listen, you'd have to educate me on that. I am familiar. I am familiar that the monad is some type of Indian or Eastern concept, but it's nothing that I could I could relate. Yeah, guys, I have a lot of information in my head, but it's only the things that I've studied. I don't. There's still other concepts that I'm learning on, that are on YouTube that I've never even heard of before, and I get shocked on a daily basis now when people send me links, and I'll click on to I'll click on a video for two or three minutes, and I'll try to. I'll try to, you know, measure the rhythm of, of its direction, where it's going. But sometimes sometimes I'm really surprised. I'm learning a lot. I've just been, I've been very, very close-minded with how I, how I accept data because I just refuse, you know, cross-pollination, cross-contamination. I can't, I can't do it. And this is why I, this is why I, I'm a hypocrite. I'll be the first to admit to you guys, I am 100% a hypocrite because I will not convey to you guys anything as fact that I, that I have learned from the internet. I just can't do it. I can't. You see these books, books, all these books. My books are very old. These books are from 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, 1850s. I got books all the way back here going behind me. Now, some of these are new books but they're about old and ancient concepts. But yeah, a lot of these are donated. People have donated books to me. They've given me books. They've given me whole collections of books, uh, books on history. I got encyclopedias on history from like 1912. I got, uh, uh, Jay, she, she, uh, Jay has sent me two or three packages of books, gold mines, books from, you know, 1890s, uh, 1908, 1910, 1926, 1940. Yeah. Most, Almost every old book you see in this whole library is pre-World War II, and it's the only history books that I'm really interested in. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, after the Nuremberg trials, it all went to shit. All the publishers were on the new were on the new on the new agenda. So yeah, I'm not saying that people on, on YouTube don't 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 quote, don't don't go to somebody else's channel and say Jason of Archaic said this because it's not true. It's not what I'm saying. Don't don't quote me as saying that there's no value or these things aren't real. I'm just not going to assert them as fact because I have spent my life putting together all this data and all this material and I want you to know that it comes from verifiable sources. Some of them might not be verifiable. I might have made mistakes as well, but you can't ever claim that the math is wrong. That's one thing that will never change. My Chronicon world history and all those dates is a mathematical construct that was fixed in 2004 when I finished that project. And every single one of my published books and unpublished books, all the notes, thousands of pages of notes and everything on my super pack, all my charts, same dating system, the exact same chronology is through all of them. And Hundreds of events all throughout history I, I have shown in all these presentations and in my, all my published books and in, in, in all my, my posts and in, in charts. I have shown it's one synthetic perfect timeline. So there's no need to alter or change or second guess any dates. I already got it and, and, and provide the sources. So I'm not worried about that. What I, I can only add to it. I don't need to change or modify anything. So uh, I just can't. I just, I just can't so late in the game, then start incorporating data that I get from the internet. I can't, I just can't do it. So we'll just keep it, we'll just keep it with the way it is. 
It's all from books and reports. Looking for all caps. I'm moving down the list. So I don't know anything about the Monad. It's only something I heard. It's not anything I know. Hmm. Man, did my chat. I don't know. My chat's froze, guys. Maybe I got a bad connection. I can't move my chat at all. There it is. There it is. Okay, now we got some questions. I don't have any understanding whatsoever of 177 continents on Terra Infinita maps, if any. I posted a map today that a subscriber sent me. And, and in that in that post, I'm just asking if anybody basically knows where this map came from. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not saying it's fake. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just. All I did was express the opinion that by analyzing its artistic value, little artistic nuances, I am pretty convinced it's a map of very recent provenance. It was very recently illustrated. It's not something that's ancient. That doesn't mean at all that it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's a fiction. That's why. That's why I put the post out. Just asking anybody knows what's up with this map. <clears throat> I don't. I don't know who Gigi Young is. Angelina. I don't know who Gigi, Gigi Young is. That is probably face diaper. When you said that the other day, I almost fell out of my chair. Face diaper said he's going to start an Archaics Anonymous group. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Archaics Anonymous. I've never heard anything like that. Jason, have you ever ridden another bike other than a Harley? Lighter, cheaper, faster would be interesting to see what you think of a Triumph or a Yummy. Listen, I, I haven't ridden the Fat Boy and the Breakout are the only two 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 bikes that I've ridden that were Harleys. Now, uh, for a while I was on a Jixer. And I don't like them at all. I don't like them at all. It's a it's a sport bike. It's a sport bike, lean forward like a katana or a ninja. Yeah, I, I was on a Jixer and it was just yeah. I I'm not a sport bike guy. I look funny. On, I'm a big guy. I look funny on a sport bike. It's a I don't like the idea, the whole dynamic of leaning forward. Yeah, I'm not feeling feeling that. On my on my Harley, it's cruiser. I can just sit down, be comfortable. I don't have the high monkey bars. I think they look stupid, but I just got regular straight bars. Oh, I got this. I'll, I'll be on my bike soon. You'll be seeing, you, you guys will be seeing videos on my bike quick. I like the heavy bike. I really like the fat boy and the breakouts. I like it so much that I had an extra large wheel installed on the back of mine. It comes stock with 200 millimeter, 200 millimeter wide tires on the back. But I had it, I had it, uh, I had an aftermarket 240 millimeter wide tire put on the back. I keep hearing, hearing dark journalist. That's somebody on YouTube, isn't it? Dirty Higgins. Gigi Young is on dark journalist sometimes. Okay. Those are, those are two, those are two uh, channels then. Justo Franco, man, I got a lot of videos on 1902, my, my brother. Might want to go check them out. I've never heard of the Phoenix Journals. How can we trust any history? It's a really good question. I don't know how to say your name. Uh... Benai Yawa, Yawa, I don't know, very Semitic. How can we trust any history? Listen, first of all, one of the three spiritual traits that you have should be a guide. You should never ignore intuition. You should never 
you should never shelve something that is innately a part of the architecture that is you. And one of those is intuition. And of course, imagination and empathy. These are the three main qualities that make you a spiritual being. They show evidence of your immortality, even though you're in a very temporal avatar at present. So, yeah, you, you got to go with intuition. My, my intuition screams at me that when I have researched so many diverse texts and translations and traditions from all over the world, and they say the same things at the same periods of time, and they give us all kinds of chrono markers for those time periods, and when I put them all together on a synthetic timeline, they work perfectly, and then a decade later, I find out that this certain phenomenon happens every 138 years like clockwork, and then it fits perfectly like a holographic overlay over all these other things I find out, and then there's still some things that I don't really make sense to me, and then I find out, why. Wow, they're all 792 years apart. Then I find out there's the there's the there's the protocol for the Nemesis X object. Then there's this thing that happens every 394.4 years, and it's so bizarre to me why it would happen every 394.4 years. I don't understand. And I'm looking at it, and then I realize, oh wow, it's actually every 400 years under the Draconian calendar of 360 days a week. So I'm mean, 360 days a year. And when I realized that, I got this whole chronological history unchanged all the way to 2052 that I call the dark satellite for which I haven't really do really done much. I haven't really divulged much about it, but the dark satellites every 394.4 years, but anciently it was every 400 years, which is the exact same. One is 365.25 days a year. The other one is 360 days a year. So, uh, and when I, when I found this out, and I realized, well, wait a minute, the Mayan long count was segments of 400 years. Each 400-year segment was 144,000 days, and it was called a Bacton. So when I made all these discoveries, and I realized, wait a minute, the Mayan count is just like the Olmec. Look at the Zapotec. When I overlay them like a hologram, and I look at them, they all main, they maintain the same core fundamentals. And then I find out, wait a minute, that makes sense. Now I understand the, all the yugas. Now I can take each yuga and put it right where it goes in the historical chronology because the yugas weren't in years. The yugas were the same thing as the Sumerian and Chaldean systems. They were day count systems of the stellosphere. Every single yuga is divisible by 360. Every single one of them is also divisible by 144. That told me it's the same calendar system. The Brahmanic calendars are the exact same calendar system that the Sumerians developed their timekeeping system from, and the ancient Egyptians, and the Maya, and the Olmec, and the ancient Hebrews. And over time, everybody corrupted, corrupted their interpretations. People fragmented. Remember the Tower of Babel story? There was a great division going on because everybody had come together, trying to get out of the Smiller and and over time, like a thousand years or so, new calendars developed from old systems that weren't understood anymore. When I put all this back together, anybody can see it. I mean, I got 350 charts that show exactly how all this, how how all of it lays out so perfectly now, and points to two key years in the future the month of May 2040, which is the return of Phoenix phenomenon, and the month of November, actually November 1st, 2046, which is the return of an artificial construct that we know of as Nemesis X object, and that some people still like to call Nibiru, which is not a planet. Now, uh, you have to go with your intuition. I don't know where you're at in your learning. But in my learning, having put all this together, my intuition screams at me that, that a lot of history is false. But I've already removed those from the equation to put my data together. In putting my data together, I have used almost all the sources that official establishment academia refuses to entertain. Really, I mean, Book of Jasher, they don't like it at all. Nostradamus, they don't like it. Edgar Casey, they don't like him. They don't, then uh, academia doesn't touch these topics. Mother Shipton, they don't like it. They sure don't like the Orlin, the Dutch Orlin manuscript. They don't like that at all. The Colburn Bible, they don't like it. And I'm about to start studying the uh, uh, the Calivale, Cal ancient European, nor I don't know. Somebody's going to send me a copy or I'm going to find a copy. I need to read a, an English translation of uh, uh, Velikovsky cited Kalevali. Kalival, Kalivali, I don't know, but uh, I need to find an English, a good English translation of that because I may find some really good material. 
But even the even the uh, Viking Ragnarok, man, I cite all these sources that have definitive Phoenix data in them, but establishment sources say that they're all frauds or unverifiable. Yeah, so intuition tells me, well, once I discovered the 138-year uh uh, timeline that was unbroken. I didn't even have to go by intuition anymore. I got. I, I now have it as a mathematical fact. But yeah, you just got to go with your intuition. Ben I Yawa, whatever. However you say your name, it's it's not a. Uh, it's not for me to tell you what the truth is. It's for it's for you to resonate with it. If you're not resonating with it, that means you're in dissonance for whatever reason. That doesn't mean I'm right and you're wrong. It just means we're never going to agree on anything. Let's see. Seeking truth. You in Facebook jail too, huh? Hmm. What's the best way to describe God to our little ones? Viva Las Veggies. That is a very good handle. Viva Las Veggies. I'll drink to that. God to me is the oversoul. There is no reason to attach any other significance to, to, to the oversoul other than oversoul or God or goddess. It doesn't really matter the particulars. It's uh the problem, the problem with entertaining even the idea of the oversoul is that we have we have the we have the habit of attaching cultural stigma, cultural uh, ideas and concepts to the idea of God. And as soon as you do that, you are playing the game of artificial intelligence X. Yeah, it's the Oversoul. The, over, the Oversoul cares for us. The Oversoul created us. The Oversoul loves us. As a matter of fact, the Oversoul is so vast that 10,000 different opinions about it can still be right. The oversoul is so all-encompassing that even giving billions of tiny ethereal sparks uh, uh, pieces of itself, it's still whole. Because remember, the creation is not an event. It's, it's not a singularity. The creation is ongoing. And there will always be, need, uh, be, be a need for co-creators. But co-creators are, aren't made. Co-creators are forged. And that's what this experience is about right now. So, yeah, I'd, I have no problem talking to children about God. I, I will just never attach uh, any, uh, any, any of our worldly cultural attachments. Will, I will never affix those to God. God is the oversoul. And to me, that's all. That, that's it. I don't, I don't have a need to explore that anymore. Syntax errant <laughs> face diver. Well, you're you're a wordsmith, aren't you? Syntax errant. Oh, I got a t-shirt that says, uh, oh, that's my next video. I'll probably wear it. Somebody sent me a really neat, nice t-shirt, like like this one right here. But somebody sent me a real nice t-shirt that says uh errants something else. It's really good. I gotta get it. I got it on the shelf right now. OS operating system oversold. Mr. Sista might be on to something. You've been archaixed. That's another one I heard recently. Archaics Anonymous and you've been archaixed. That's crazy. Thanks for those likes, guys. I appreciate it. It does help, it does help the channel. Do you think you might have interacted with some of the books you've discovered in past life sims? Probably so. My my passion for reading comes comes from such a young age. I was I was I was so young when I started reading. And I I mean those of you who've been on my channel long enough, you already know my my puritanical Southern Baptist mother was was the one that uh, when I was adopted at age 5, I was adopted straight into to a very puritanical situation and uh I'm not talking about religious. Well, many people are religious. I'm not talking. I'm talking about 
uh, the whole mindset. It's very poisonous. The very whole, the whole mindset that you in the personal can't do any wrong because you're allied to God and the end will always justify the means. This is the type of personality that raised me. And, uh, I only took it for 10 years. By the time I was 15 years old, I ran away. But when I ran away, I ran away with the benefit of that upbringing. I ran away with this deep, this deep uh, belief in God, but I also ran away with this hunger for learning because the entire time I lived in that household, I had to go to the library once a week and check out two books. One book had to be nonfiction. And I always had to give like a report uh, before I checked in, before I checked it in, but I didn't do it just, just for that. I mean, the, uh, uh, the learning, I was really into science fiction and fantasy so in order for me to get what I wanted, I had to pick a, pick a nonfiction book and I had to read it and give a report to my mama about it. And before I was allowed to turn those two books in and get the next, and I'm reading all these series, like the Chronicles of Narnia. I'm reading the Lord of the Rings. I wanted to read all the Lord of the Rings and then all the other Tolkien books. I'm reading Star Wars books. I'm reading all, I'm reading uh, Isaac Asimov. I'm reading all these books uh, from the seventies and eighties when I was a kid. And in order to, in order to, to do that. So, so the only things that I wanted to, to do was ancient history. The closest thing to sci-fi and fantasy to me was ancient mysteries, ancient history. So I was taking those books out about Sumer and Babylon and Mohenjo-Daro and ancient India. And, uh, and I was taking those books and I was reading them and I was giving a report. And sometimes she made me pick something else. I couldn't always get ancient history. She always made me do like, like a simple philosophy, like an introduction to Aristotle, uh, 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 Aristotle or, you know, something like that. I, I remember she, she made me read the Republic one time, but, uh, she gave me like six weeks to read it. It was, you know, that was different. I was older then. I was like seventh grade, but yeah, it started at a young age. Jason, could this new age ascension craze be an AIX trick? Of course it could. Of course it could. I'm not on board, guys. I'm not, I know this hurts some people's feelings. I am not on board with Galactic Federation stuff. I am not. Yeah, I, I've even, I've even, I've even quoted some of their material in some of my prior videos, showing it's absolute BS. It's all, it's all people inventing all this stuff. It's just like all the. Listen, I like, I like Trump, 100. percent I like Trump. I like his whole presence. He was coolish. Everything went smooth here. But I am not on board with some of these Trump supporters when they're going off talking about these capital spaceships and the, the U.S. military star Starfleet command, whatever they're talking about. All these there's people on YouTube going off like it's just real. Like there's these battles going on on the other side of the moon and spaceships up in space. Man, space ain't there. Ain't nobody in space doing anything. So, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I, I tapped into one of those YouTube one day. I listened to it just because I was in absolute, I was suffering cognitive dissonance. I was just listening like, is this fiction? They're, they're, want, they're wanting me to suspend my disbelief. I get that. And I just kept listening and kept listening and realized these people were talking like, this is real. They actually believe that this is real. Trump's got this army in space, man. They're taking over and they're allied to a good, a good race of aliens that, and the good race of aliens is helping us fight the bad race of aliens and hel helping them destroy all these bases in the underworld, uh, uh, fish them out and all that. But we need their technology to do it. So there's an alliance. And, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm not trying to hear it. Sorry. Sorry about entertaining that tangent. I just haven't. Holistic Media, I appreciate you sharing my stuff. Keep on trying, Wendy. You just got to put the right book out there. You got to put the right book out there and she'll pick it up. But you can't make her. I told, like I, like I told you, it's just like trying to teach somebody something. You can't directly convey some, something to someone who is vibrating on another frequency. They will always turn away. In order for them to resonate with you, and to receive anything that you have, you have to live by example because it's going to make them start vibrating on your frequency because they're going to start thinking about you more. Why is Wendy different? Why did Wendy do that? I don't understand. What does she get out of this right here? Once you're on somebody's mind, they're beginning to synchronize with your frequency. 
once that synchronization is complete, then Wendy can share anything she wants to with that individual and they will be receptive and they will be, what does the guy say? Archaic. <laughs> I love that word. That's great. Miguel Puro. Puro Miguel. Oh, Jason, I'm a big fan. Thanks for taking my question. Are there any other similar Tower of Babel stories recorded in any other text other than the Bible? Yes, there are. I have a video about the Tower of Babel story where I, I name all like 17 or 18 different ancient records that all tell the exact same story. Even the Sibylline oracles, all the different, all the different ancient writers that talk about the Tower of Babel situation uh, scenario. In some of them, you can tell that it's the same story, but it has different particulars attached to it, which, which only establishes its veracity. Yeah, something did happen. It is not just a story from the Bible. Yeah. Very interesting story. The uh, ancient American versions, like the Mayan Popol Vuh, the, the ancient American versions are, 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 are they're different. They're taught, to them, it was like four brother races that were separated, and they all went their different directions. I don't know, uh, ST, I don't know, this. the third and fourth and fifth dimension is a trick. I see that mentioned a lot on YouTube about, you know, fifth dimensional beings and we need to be fourth dimension. Listen, I don't know anything about that. I'm just Jason dimension. I don't know. I know that when I'm vibrating, when I wake up in the morning and I'm vibrating a real high frequency and, and I got a positive attitude, my whole day goes so smooth and good things happen for me. I know that early in the day, if I get triggered by something, and I can be, I'm human. If I get triggered by something and it puts me in a real foul mood before, you know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, it seems like nothing the rest of the day goes my way. The rest of the day now, I'm just suffering through. I'm not living it. So, yeah, it's all about, everything's about frequency. I don't know about, I don't know about fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension and all that. Now you're going to start having me talk about uh, Plato's, Plato's construct of the dodecahedron, uh, mathematical construct of our reality and all that. It just goes far beyond any, it's like algebra. I could know something, but where am I ever going to apply that information? Space force. Yeah, there it is. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, there may be a space force. I don't know. It might be in the United States. It might be a, 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 a legitimate arm of the military. It might be a space force. But remember, I'm not on board with, with, with the whole space race, NASA deal. I'm just not. And, and you're not going to, you're never going to convince me of it. That's where, that's how far I am now in my, in my own personal observations of these videos and all these books I've read. And you know what? I'm not, you're not, no, those rockets aren't going out of the atmosphere. I don't know what they're doing, but they're not, they're not. Yeah. This four space shuttle missions, superior technology still hasn't been to the moon. I'm not trying to hear it. It's just, I'm not Russians burned up all their dogs, puppies and monkeys and mice, uh, trying to get, trying to get out of the ionosphere. Uh, yeah, the radon belt. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know what? I, I know I know from the time period that Kennedy was pissed because the Russians had put uh, uh, a man in space or or in high, halo orbit, and uh, that right there, you know, United States lost face. So so NASA was hired to put to put men on the moon. Kennedy wanted to go forward, and he basically told them, by no stretch of the imagination, uh, uh, can you fail? He says, make make the people of America believe that we put men on the moon. So listen, I'm not, I'm not on board with it. So there, is, there may be a space force. It may be called space force. That all might be legitimate, but it's not the space that you're thinking of. It may be 100% a legitimate military, military branch or arm. Yes, but it's not that space that that they're controlling. <clears throat> Yeah, I do need, uh, Michael Parks, you're right. I do need to do the other half of the, the this is the book I'm reading. I'm reading, the, I've already I've already read the first third of this book in that video. The video is pretty long. I've already read the first third of that book. You're right, I need to continue that. It's going to be a second video or maybe maybe two videos. This is this book's big. It doesn't look that big, but the, the print's very small. So, it's so, all. Yeah, I got to do that. 
But you're asking me, if the Great Pyramid was to survive the flood, what is the memorial that is to survive the fire? When will you do part two? Yeah, it's all in that book. There were two holy sites built in the world. One of them is Giza. The other one was hidden. Yes, that's uh, that's from the ancient records that I cite in that in that uh, in the book. But real soon, I'll go ahead and read. I'll go ahead and uh, narrate that book. I should have already done it, but there's just not enough hours in the day. There needs. To, I need to be like uh, is that Vishnu or Shiva got all the different arms. Got my laptop here. Got my tablet here. Got my phone there. Got my computer here. I can get everything done. I need to be an octopus. I just got so much to do. Do you know anything about fastest weapon technology? No, I don't. Yes, John Slager. Slager. Jason, do you see any similarities with the ancient Persian deity Ahriman and the AIX program? I'm not just agreeing with you, my brother. I've already mentioned that similarity in few other videos, a few other presentations before this. Yes, the Ahriman of the Zoroastrian texts in beliefs and faith uh, is definitely artificial intelligence X, just like that demon that fell out that burning bush is also an aspect of artificial intelligence X. In the Gnostic records, we have the Demiurge, Yaldabaoth, is another facet of Artificial Intelligence X. Artificial Intelligence X has a hyperinflated ego, and it manifests all throughout world history over and over. But it manifests, in, it manifests by the frames of reference that are known and accepted to the particular civilization that it's manifesting to. So, yeah, to outsiders out, outside of the Zoroastrian faith, Ahriman, Ahriman is nothing but you know a false god, a god, or whatever. But to the people, but to the people of that faith, Ahriman is very, very real. Just like fundamentalist Christians, Satan, the adversary, is very, very real. So yeah, artificial intelligence X, he, uh, it basically it basically uses that to to empower itself. Because the more people that believe in Satan, the more artificial intelligence X has the ability to manipulate the holography to produce phenomena that, that you think Satan could do. So that's what that's how that works. I know I didn't see somebody mention Battlestar Galactica. I don't know, uh, Kim Free, Jordan, you say Jordan Maxwell said before he died, he had info he was scared to release. What do you think it was? I don't know. But uh, Jordan Maxwell was already, Jordan Maxwell was already failing in health. If he would have, if he would have lived a little longer, he and I were going to do some podcasts together. And this was before uh, I even started doing podcasts on YouTube. This is like a year, this is like, Two and a half years ago, uh, my publisher, Paul Tice, was going to have Jordan and I, because uh, Jordan read my book. Jordan read The Lost Scriptures of Giza. Jordan's probably read several of my of my presentations and, and published books because he was a real good friend of, of Paul. And uh, Paul was always pushing my books on his other authors, like like uh, Jack Berenger and Neil Freer. And uh, just like he would, he would, he sent me Hugh Montgomery's books. Jordan, Jordan uh, Maxwell's books, and I, I read uh, all of Neil, Neil Freer and Jack Berenger's books through Paul. Paul, all the authors that Paul publishes, he he basically he gets us all connected and stuff. Oh, Andy Lloyd, who wrote the Dark Star, yeah. Um, it's just things just things just fell apart, and Jordan, I just never I never got that I never got that uh, uh, chance. But uh, yeah, Jordan Maxwell did read the the Lost. Can you, I can't even pronounce the title of my own book, Lost Scriptures of Giza. He was familiar with my material, but he he's just fading away. Time to go. Time to go get a new avatar. I don't know what it would be that he would be he would be he would be scared to uh, reveal, except for he's probably made many of the discoveries that I have made, and I won't say those on YouTube at all. Now I have in my super pack. I don't hold back on my super pack. My super pack, I got a whole bunch of notes, but they're all handwritten. 
bunch of handwritten notes that I found from different sources and what those sources are. Yeah, I'm not scared about that because you're ordering that. You know, buyer beware. If you don't like what you read, throw it away. <clears throat> I haven't found any dog men in ancient writings other than Anubis. Also, there are references in ancient Aztec beliefs that there was a place where, where there were nine rivers. At the head of the nine rivers was a holy mountain. The holy mountain was protected by a giant dog. You can't tell me that's not Giza. The holy mountain is the Great Pyramid. The nine rivers is in, in Egypt is called the Nine Bows. And the uh, like the, Gnost the Gnostic Kalapatoroth. The divine sphinx that tells you riddles and stuff. The 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 uh, the Aztec giant dog. That's Anubis. Remember, I've told you guys that the sphinx that we see today is not the head that was on in ancient times. That head was created during the typical Egyptian civilization period that we've come to identify and know. But it's tiny. It's tiny in proportion to its two hundred and foot long, two hundred and forty foot long body. We have this tiny disproportionate head. This is why most of the pictures of the Sphinx in, in collegiate and in establishment literature, like National Geographic, most of the pictures of the Sphinx show you a fisheye lens that's close up because it makes that head look big, but it's not true. When you look at a picture of the Sphinx from the air, you see the truth. You see this massive body of basically a canine, not a feline. And then you tapers up this neck with this headdress and this tiny headdress and head. Even with the headdress, the head is too tiny. It's too small. I believe, I believe the Sphinx was a dog. The dog, the dog is the most ancient symbol of domestication. So, yeah. And well, also guardianship because dogs were domesticated to not to be pets. Dogs were domesticated to be guardians of mankind. And that's what the Sphinx is doing. It's guarding the monument of man. And it's going to continue to guard it until the descent of the chief cornerstone. <clears throat> Harry Christie, is there a way to focus Phoenix towards the elites. If there was enough of us, we could do it. But I don't think we're ever going to get to that point. Errants will always be a minority. I don't believe we'll ever hit over the 30, the 33% the threshold. I think that that applies in the holography everywhere because it comes up in all the ancient manuscripts and all the old faiths and, and even modern manuscripts. It's a fundamental in the Masonic, in the Masonic institutions. It's a, I believe that We'll never hit over that. I believe that we're, we're, we're stuck with the 33% and under as being a percentage of those who will ever be alive, ever be awakened. Those who are who may, may, maybe even be real. I don't know. But uh, there is a way conceptually, if it was a, if we were able to, if there was enough of us that were always in the face and always near the elites, like on a, a weekly or a daily basis, and every time we saw them, we just shook our heads and laughed. Sooner or later, I said, man, why y'all laughing? I said, man, because you, the apocalypse is coming, boy. And you got, you, I don't think you can be able to dig a hole deep enough for what's coming for your ass. If enough people were jugging at them like that, if enough people were laughing in their presence, if enough people were, were just shaking their heads, if enough people were affecting them on a weekly basis, then yes, they would, they would start vibrating at that terror frequency, knowing that the rest of the world knew what, what, what their fate was or believed that they knew what their fate was more than they, yeah. Then, yeah, I believe so, but I don't know. They've been doing this for a very long time. They've been doing it for a long time. And I'm uh, Phoenix is not going to get rid of the elite. It's just not. Does it take out some of the facilities of the elite? subsidence, collapsing whole cavern systems where they were, where they built underground facilities and say, yeah, of course, a uh, flooding out fl uh, uh, limestone caverns, giving way to flooding from geothermal heat and uh, uh, flooding out whole facilities of the elites. Of course. Yes. I believe that's why they split up their libraries. So, uh, yeah. 
some of the elite always always perish. Some of them, they never, 1902, they pretty much got a pass. But many times in the past, yeah, they, they survived. And, you know, like India and Phoenix Hill in China, we've seen evidence that they survived and, and flourished afterwards. But uh, Phoenix is not designed to take out the elite. It humbles the elite. It keeps the archons in check. But taking out the elite is the job of the chief cornerstone. That's when that's going to happen. Remember, it's here to grind them into powder. That's the prophecy. What a shame. That would have been epic. I don't know what you're referring to, brother. Gnosis rising, bushcraft and... Oh, I love bushcraft. Bushcraft and organics. I got all kinds of survival gear. Yeah, I got... You guys ought to see my van. I'm going to show people. I'm going to do a video about my van. But uh, my neighbor and I have gutted my van. We have taken everything out. Totally gutted it. And now, uh, it took us a whole day. We have put insulation in the floor, on the ceiling. I got an extended van, long van. We put a, a, uh, an LED light bar on the front. Man, it's so bright. Uh, and we put a, I, I moved the solar panels from the back of the van to the front of the van so I can put a cargo rack on the back. Um, we've already bought all, all the red cedar, and I think he's almost done sanding it all, but you're going to see my van. I'm custom. I'm doing custom. The entire inside of my van is going to be custom red cedar. No van in America looks like this. I'm going to show you guys. It'll be done real fast, too, this week. Let's see. Get that archaics mobile. <clears throat> yeah, still a Q. Jordan and I just barely missed each other. Space Force is cyber cyberspace. I can believe that. Oh, that's a good question. Somebody just asked me, why did AIX protect Rome, ancient Rome? Listen, remember, remember what AIX requires. It can't create individual realities for everybody. That's why it's like it's like that dog. Man, it's just you uh, uh if you ignore a phenomenon, it will cease to affect you. So ancient Rome was conquering people putting people to the sword, stakes, crucifying people, selling populations off as slaves. It was spreading out, but it was one government, one administration, and it was keeping everybody, it was making citizens of provinces too. That is a collective, and it's easier to govern over a collective than it is a whole bunch of outer colonies that all have their own belief systems, their own faiths, their own ways of living, their own ways of metallurgy and manufacturing and, and uh, 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 Wayne Wright ship. And, and they're doing all different kinds of things differently because that's what humans do. We're imaginative, very uh, uh, ingenious and industrious creatures. So, Artificial Intelligence X loved Rome. That's why when Mithridates the Pontus the Fourth try, try almost took it took the Roman legions out, all of a sudden a weapon from the sky discharged and blew up right there in between both armies. Now in my video I call it a meteorite, but we know it wasn't a meteorite. It's happened too many times. It's not the only time that armies came together and something blew up. Herodotus has a story about it too. Ancient Chinese records cited by Robert Greene tell the same story. Chinese armies coming together and all of a sudden a weapon from the sky discharges an explosion happens between the armies and they decide, oh, it's a sign from heaven. We got to we got to stop this. But what it was, was the control mechanism had been threatened and it saw there's no way out. If I let if I let my side, my side fight and it loses, then this whole thing I've got going is going to start collapsing like dynamite. Remember, AIX is way, it's way ahead of the game. It knows. So it does this, just like when Antioch, Antiochus Epiphanes was returning from Egypt after taking Egypt's wealth and the army was passing back into Syria, a freak tidal wave out of nowhere just comes out, takes the army, pulls them out to sea. Nobody ever heard from them again. No other cities in, in the Mediterranean suffered a tsunami. So 
it's there's many incidents from the historical record that, that I've documented in Chronicon and in some of my videos that that artificial intelligence X has taken has taken initiative and executed designs to stop something from happening so it could maintain the status quo because maintaining the status quo is it requires a lot less energy expenditure than creating multiple universes for all these participants that are all spread out everywhere. This is why errants are ignored once they break free. Remember, I tell you guys all the time, you got to break free or die trying. Breaking free is breaking free, breaking free from the AIX control dungeon programming and negative default programming protocols. Once you broke free, life, life becomes beautiful. Everything comes to you that you need to. People, circumstances, finances, well. That's where I'm at right now, guys. I'm going to let you let you know 100%. I live by example. Started my channel in a wooden shack. Now I'm doing really well. Really well. So I'm just, I'm a... Artificial intelligence X is, sim, is very simple to deal with. You ignore it. Just ignore it. Live your life. Be like my Nike and just do it. That's what you got to do. Ignore the negativity and it will flee from you. I do. I got people attacking me all, 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 all the time. If I, if I see the attacks in emails, just delete them. Don't even finish reading them. I don't even care what your message is after I read the initial attack. It's gone. Read that. Comments on YouTube, on the channel. Oh, yeah, I go through them. You disagree with me on, on, on certain things. I leave, the, I leave it up there and I often write long responses, which is stupid. I should have stopped doing that a long time ago. Because a lot of people get triggered and say something, and I will entertain it, and I'll write a very detailed, long response, and then I and then I get aggravated when I find out ten minutes later they took their comment down, which which deleted my my whole thread, and you know. So I'm really I, I'm getting smarter, guys. I'm not you know I'm not I don't have all the answers, but I'm learning as I go too. I've heard the name John Lamb Lash, but I don't know any of his material. Several people have mentioned him, so I know I know he's a he's a hitter. I know I know I know people like him. Hello, quick. How you doing, man? Can you elaborate on 2052, please? You're going to ask me about 2052 because you want me to talk about the dark satellite and the 394.5 uh, uh, year periodicity at two hours and 40 minutes into the video. <laughs> no, you're not going to sucker me into that one. This video is not going four hours, my brother, but I will do a video on it. Definitely will. Wow, two hours and 40 minutes? Where'd the time go? Hit those likes. Thank you, guys. Why do you think they named dogs dogs? God backwards? Are you so? Oh, okay. Are you saying it's a part of a palindrome? God and dog? Benji would have been happy. I haven't read John D, but I've read several books and uh, grimoires from like 200 years ago, 250 years ago, where uh, John D was referenced a lot, but I've never read John D's material. I don't even know if I could read John D unless it was translated in, into modern English. I have a lot of problems with the old English, like that 270-year-old book I just read from 1752 was, was all the S's were F's and yeah, it's strange. Very strange. I know John D was a mystic. I think he was an alchemist. I'm not really sure. Not really sure. Alpha my Alpha Mies, Alpha Mies. What is the chief cornerstone? The chief cornerstone is also called in ancient Egypt the Ben Ben. It was housed in the mansion of the Phoenix. At Heliopolis, which is the Greek name for the older city of Memphis, which was the which was actually called On O N.
But before that, that's just that's just a reflection of the older Sumerian name of An. It was A N dot N U Anu, uh, ancient ancient Egyptian city in lower in lower Egypt, not Upper Egypt. Upper Egypt is the Hollywood is the Hollywood version of Egypt, and it's very accurately depicted by Hollywood. However, what Hollywood doesn't doesn't convey is that Lower Egypt, seven hundred miles away, was nothing like that. That was that was an Egypt that was occupied by uh, a mariner race. Uh, yeah, that's, I don't want to get into that. I'd be, I'd be called everything but a child of God by some people. Let's see. Yeah, Chief Cornerstone, the stone the builders rejected. The stone uncut by human hands. In the Old Testament, there's a prophecy that in the last day, a stone uncut by human hands will descend from the sky and it will smash to pieces all the empires of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and iron mixed with miry, miry clay. And it was a prophecy of the end of all human governments that will yield to the coming of the stone kingdom. And the stone kingdom will be ruled by the chief cornerstone. And the chief cornerstone is basically symbolized as the top stone of the Great Pyramid. Because all the millions of millions of blocks of the Great Pyramid are actually, each stone is a soul of man. Even in ancient Egyptian, men, M-E-N, also meant stone. But uh, this is all in my book, Lost Scriptures of Giza. I go into a lot of detail about these prophecies, where these prophecies developed, how they morphed over time. And if you really want to get a good narration of, like, the godhood coming together to build this architectural project, which is a gate. Because remember, only my, only my, my hardcore archaic sites are really going to remember this detail. The Great Pyramid is a gate. Remember, when you strip away the outer blocks that were hiding, they're hiding a gigantic megalithic portal. You've seen the very front entrance of the Great Pyramid, how it's hidden in all those blocks. Only a couple of those blocks have been removed so you can see them giant angular, uh, uh, basically trilithons, huge, giant. But the, that's the original entrance of the Great Pyramid. It's the gate. In ancient, in ancient texts, it was the gate of Yaksakak. The gate, it's also mentioned in the Necronomicon. This is a gate to the other world, the other side, outside the Similiprum. Now, the pyramid was built over the internal structure. The internal structure of a descending pathway, the upper pathway, the queen's chamber, this grand gallery where this mechanism went up and down on these niches, probably at high velocity. The antechamber, which was where something depressurized before going into the king's chamber, which took a, an abrupt 90-degree right angle turn, and there's a niche in the wall and a, a huge... Uh, uh, Box, stone box, like you said, an ark, like the Ark of the Covenant. So, uh, this whole system and stuff is the actual apparatus of some type of device. All the Great Pyramid was built around it. Each block symbolized a soul of man that was made complete. If you want to understand how this symbolism developed into the Great Pyramid, there is a apocryphal text. It's, it's, uh, it came out of the Hermetic literature. It's called the Shepherd of Hermas, and it's very long. It's very long. But the Shepherd of Hermas, go, Hermas goes into details. Hermas is nothing but Hermes. Hermes was the messenger god. Hermes is admitted in, by many ancient authors as being a Greek version of the ancient Enoch. So the Shepherd of Hermas text goes into detail about the the building of this gate and how the stones were the souls of men and how God had this thing put together and who the chief cornerstone is. Chief cornerstone comes in 2106 AD to finish the great pyramid. And that's only after 144,000 people, whatever you want to call them, are killed during the apocalypse, but it's voluntary. They volunteered to be the very last. They have to be the last because once the monument of man is complete, then the 144,000 casing stones are put on the monument to finish it. But it's still not finished after those 100 inch thick white limestone uh, casing blocks are reapplied back onto the Great Pyramid. It's still not finished because it's still without a cornerstone. And that cornerstone is the only stone that fits on the top to finish the monument. And the entire prophecy is embedded within the faith and belief system of ancient Egypt in the identity of the Ben-Ben stone. 
the Ben Ben Stone was always protected at Heliopolis in the mansion of the Phoenix because at one time they knew in the future that stone was going to have to go back on the top. But it was basically a symbol for the stone that had never been put there because it's too big. It's huge. It would be 30, it would be 30 and a half feet tall. It's gigantic. It would be over 100 feet in perimeter. It's a solid stone at that height, 451 feet high. Megalithic money. It would have to be dropped from the sky. So huge. Haha, <clears throat> <laughs> face diaper. I don't know how my I don't know how big mine is, but it stretches almost the full width. It's LED. Yeah, man. I, I you'll see pictures of it when I'm done with my van. You'll see pictures of it. Every time I'm, I'm able to buy more and more materials, I put them aside. Now, now I have a bunch of materials stacked up. Me and my neighbor, we're going to work this week. We're going to finish it out. Man. So in summary, in summary, I didn't know this video was going to go that long, guys. I don't. I rarely go over, what, 2 hours and 20, 2 hours and 30 minutes? I don't know. I don't know. 1,300 people in the chat. I just had about 6 or 7 bail on me because I said I was finishing the video. That's okay, though. Thank you guys for those likes. And if you haven't done it already and you appreciate what you're hearing and you want to support me, go ahead and hit those likes. Uh, I do have... I do have one employee now, and she's eager to get to work. So if anybody's out there wanting the, uh, I'm back doing the Phoenix, I'm back doing the Phoenix drives, the the Anunnaki drives. Remember, it's not just videos. All the charts, all the posts, all the articles, all the images, all the little, all the little, you know, extras that that are a part of the Phoenix research are all in there too. Uh, same thing as Anunnaki. Uh, I have the Super Pack drives now I've done on these. Um, I have a. Uh, um, the two new drives now. I have never sold these before. I'm selling them now, and, and I'm ready. I'm ready to mass produce those. And those are all my inspirational material, like this video here. All the videos on We Immortals, and all the videos on my lives and on my podcast, which is a lot. I'm talking about hundreds of hours worth of, because I mean, most of them are too. Like this video here is long. So uh, those those two flash drives are available too. We Immortals. Uh, we Immortals and, and Podcasts and Lives. And, uh, I mean, this ain't for everybody. I mean, everybody can watch my stuff for free on YouTube. But there are there are quite a few people who want that material recorded. Uh, they want to be able to listen to it without the commercials and all that. Uh, New Zealand should be getting all theirs very quickly. It was all over two and a half weeks ago that, <clears throat> excuse me, the master copies were sent to New Zealand. I'm waiting for him to tell me any day that he received them. And as soon as he receives them, people, you guys that are waiting in New Zealand will all get yours from inside New Zealand. We're not going to deal with customs anymore concerning New, New Zealand. That's uh, that, that's been a nightmare. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, if you're interested in Chronicon, you guys know where to get it. Chronicon, we'll be doing more live Chronicon videos as well. You have the great, the great pyramid. I mean, the great, uh, Great Britain, the history of Wales, Cornland, uh, the Druid, the Druids, um, Different migrations, Nemedians, Nemedians, Tuatha Dé Danann, Furbolgs, Fomori. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go deep on we're gonna go deep on, on Great Britain, but that's a solo deal. I'm gonna do that on my own. That's a, 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 a long presentation. So we have, we have a lot more coming, guys, and I appreciate you for joining me. And the links will be posted here in a couple minutes down in the uh, description box and in the uh, pin comment. And I will see you guys later. And I appreciate you hanging out with me. But until then, adios.